Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome, welcome back. It's another Saturday um, and we got some exciting interviews to get into. As y'all know, y'all are here for a reason and that reason is to talk to the top five winners of the Endless Engines 3D Challenge. Um, we're gonna just get into their processes, their creative processes. That's really what I'm interested in is how each one of these uh, individual artists create in their own unique way and what goes into a winning piece of art um, for these challenges you know and it's always tough pulling the winners is always tough because there's so much good art like each and every one of the one of the top 100 artists could have been a winner even outside of that you know um, but we're here to learn we're here to learn and and and, uh, and learn from them learn from their creative processes we got five winners here we're gonna start with Sam uh, fifth place Sam Horton and we're gonna go fifth fourth third second all the way to first and we're gonna get into their project files we're gonna get into their references we're gonna get into uh, what inspires them we're gonna get into the programs they use we're gonna get into how they got started in 3d um, so if you guys are new to 3d or you know if you're a seasoned 3d artist I think there's gonna be something for everyone here I always learn a lot when we do these um, so you also have to bear with me here I have a slight cold I don't know if y'all can tell maybe maybe you can tell um, so yeah I'll just preface that but I think without further ado guys it's time to get into it uh, we're gonna start with Sam Horton fifth place baby let's let's switch on over let's do it Sam hey <laughs> what's up man how you doing really really well yeah um yeah beautiful day outside just coming to an end so yeah nice to relax into an evening and go through go through some cg yeah yeah where are you based so i'm in the midlands of the uk so uh just north of london basically um cool but yeah from the deep south cornwall originally awesome man awesome so for the people here do you want to pull up your final your final piece of art and just loop it for yep. us that'd yeah. be awesome and then we can kind of take a look at it and um you know i got a ton of questions even outside of the art but if you guys have questions for sam here we'll do our best here um and and maybe we'll, we'll turn it over to you guys for a, for a little q a um so i'll preface you guys there i'm gonna try and remember i, I got a lot of questions myself but when we do that just hit me with an at punisher in the live chat and then we can ask some questions to sam but um so sam this this piece of art is incredible your, your photorealism is on point your simulations with the sand and dirt are on point and the missiles like the explosions there's so much going on um what program are you using these days so i've been in 3ds max for like eight years or so uh it's the first thing i ever started using um because yeah. at the time it was uh blender was still just sort of coming up obviously millions of people using it but when i asked around i was told 3ds max is where you want to go and yeah. <laughs> whether that was right or wrong who knows but it was it's treated me well in that time and uh, i basically started using it because uh well i went to uni to do product design so okay nothing to do with cgi and there was a project where we were meant to film a little video of our product and i thought oh i'd really like to animate mine like how hard can 3d animation be to get into <laughs> yeah and uh so yeah i started learning 3ds max to do to do just that one little project and just sort of stemmed from there just that's going. great no that that's great it's you know um right now you know probably since the beginning of the year to be honest like i've been reading all these books on creativity and like where creativity comes from and all this and that and um you know i think it comes down to doing stuff because it's fun and it sounded like in your case you you know you did it because it sounded like a cool idea at the time right um <laughs> it's just something fun but now like do you do 3d for work or is this just a hobby or what so i'm a i'm a toy designer i still do product design basically i do all of the sort of stuff i do basically contract work for lego and hasbro and mattel and things like that oh, wait, dude, the contract work that i yeah i know <laughs> people always get very excited about like Ooh. Do you, do you make any toys? Do you just play with toys all day? And yes, pretty much. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Have you seen Spaceballs? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, um, man. That's cool. So, like, so, you, you design, do you design Legos? Uh, I've 
nothing that's come out yet nothing that i can talk about i've, I've done like a whole load of different products i've done nerf oh. guns i've done uh, baby toys i've done star wars the, the little baby yodas and the robots from star wars have all been turned into toys so i've done all of those obviously as part of like a wider team wow um, that's it's super... become more animation based recently so sort of my role has become design the toy and then animate it to show it off uh, and create like a little short film to show off what it does and how it works that's awesome i love it so you're integrating 3d into your work your the career side of things because your passion has you know pushed you yeah. for you said six years seven years you've been uh, in i've been in this job for six years and so i've been doing it as a i've been doing 3d professionally for probably five of those got gotcha. you um, got gotcha. you that's amazing man yeah i know um y y your scene is is incredible we had you so for those of you um, who don't know, basically, you know, we hold these challenges and, uh, it's about a month long where you got, everyone has a month to do, uh, the prompt, right? And every Monday we meet up on the discord server, um, which if you want to join, there's a link down below. And, uh, basically we hold these, like these just little meetups on discord and we have artists come up and they show their work and it's like unfinished work. And here you go. Yeah. This was like week one, wasn't it? Or week two? I don't remember. Yeah, this was week one of the challenge. Yeah, it was yeah. early. Yeah, dude, that what a perfect timing. Uh, and I was already, I was blown away by by this at such an early, you know, you're only a week in, but you really seem to like, how did you get this busted out so quickly? So if I show you this, I mean, this will start to look like cheating, but this was a shot that I made in 20... 19 yes okay so this was me learning cg so this little robot character has been my little guy for years like i yeah. created him straight out of uni yeah um and then i wanted to basically design a speeder for him and be, build a whole environment for him um but then i took like a year or two off from doing sort of personal projects and i had done nothing really on it for a long time and then i was on a work trip in germany it had been a like awake for like 50 hours or something it was exhausting and your video dropped showing this endless engines competition <laughs> and I, I showed it to a couple of colleagues and they were like oh you have to you have to get in that you surely like you can reuse these old project files i thought uh these are kind of a bit rubbish <laughs> the, the quality of the models and the quality of the textures are a bit naff so i basically end up in the first couple of weeks just set about completely rebuilding everything so new new sculpts for everything retexturing everything um wow yeah it was kind of a kind of a whole process of building out this guy up to that level which was pretty much where he was before and That's then there cool. was a, a repaint and then i didn't like that one because it was too grungy and i repainted again and it was too dirty and I repainted again, and I was kind of happier with this sort of final cleaner one. So I basically just did this the whole time over and over again with all of the old assets was to completely remodel them and then re-unwrap and retexture everything to get it feeling right. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, that just goes to show that like, if you guys keep creating, and if you keep, you know, practicing what you love, you're like, when the time comes, you'll be ready, you know, because if you didn't do that in 2019, then you know, you may not have entered the challenge. Who knows? You know, like you, yeah, exactly. you, you were at least at a point where, and, and good on your friends too, for like pushing you to, to do that. They saw, you know, and, and good on you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Friends, Jack and Dom were very excited about the idea of me doing this. They were there behind me the entire time, pointing and waving at my screen pretty much. Oh, that's great. It's, it really goes to show, like, I just want to highlight that you know everything stacks right so you know today you might not feel ready i don't know whatever that whatever that would mean but then a year or two from now even stuff you did years back can still help you today so it all adds right um and you never know what's going to happen or where it's going to go so all, all you know is that you can just have fun with you with your with your passion and and see what it morphs into you know um and it morphed into something really really cool so you are in 3ds max my goodness i hadn't seen this layout in <laughs> ages wow um it's been yeah it's been a long time i used to use 3ds 
uh, for maybe like six years. Um, it was a long time, actually. But I, I am getting carried away here. Walk us through your scene. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, chaos, mainly. Yeah, it's just a, <laughs> just a, a mess of a file. Um, yeah, this is the, 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 the raw animation. You know, it's the, the background isn't actually moving. I, I found that most of my uh, block out work I did, um, I just put a video of your scene in the background that you oh, made. Yeah. And I sort of just matched the animation and pacing to that uh, Perfect. just to try and feel it out. And uh, that was a little trick I learned along the way was doing everything stationary uh, just really gave it a, a lot easier to do the simulations and things. If you're moving at a, a 200, 300 miles an hour along a, a long stretch, uh, the uh, fabric sims just go bananas and That's smart. fly around all over the place. So it became a, a thing to simulate everything still, animate everything still so I can get a feel for things. Obviously then as you're animating, you're, you're camera's not shooting off and your vehicle is not flying out of frame every time you want to do a minor tweak so sort of isolating everything still before trying to adjust it to be a, a moving on through the scene kind of thing that's a great tip you know you because the more elements you throw in to to like add to the chaos of especially a simulation you want to really kind of limit it to the known factors and uh the more variables you introduce it, it could you know, then you're just troubleshooting more and more. So that's smart to to lock it down to the center. Just focus on exactly what you're trying to do for the simulations here. Because um, technically they would, you know, I'm sure you're using like wind. You have like a little, like a fan. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's 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 perfect. Um, so was was animation this and simming this, was that your first, first kind of thing? Yeah, I pretty much just started with making out this shot just to feel out everything. I, I had a vision of what I wanted, make it loop. I had a vision of what I wanted the environment to be and what I wanted the story to be. But before I committed to what I knew was gonna be four or five weeks of work, I wanted to know that I was up to the task of making motion that I was happy with and feeling out basically a lot of the early problem solving. Um, just wanted to see that I, I knew what I was doing before I tried it. Now, did you know like what the background would be and all this at this point, or like how how much of a final version of this in your head did you have at the beginning versus just kind of going with the flow and feeling it out as you created? Uh, I knew I always wanted it to be him running away from something, and I knew I always wanted it to be sort of deserty and Martian-y. Um, it sort of goes into a lot of old work that I've done with this character. He's always been situated in a sort of reddish desert area. Yeah. So I wanted to carry on with that theme. Um, but I did go in several different directions early on, trying to work out what I wanted it to feel like. Um, yeah, not all to great success. There's a lot of, there were a lot of bad ones early on. Yeah, I mean, you can't, um, you can't nail it every time, you know? It's tough when you're just trying to play around, mess around, and also like try it, try to have it be as perfect as possible. Those two yeah. things are often hard when put together. But that's I think great. When, yeah, right here. When talking nice. to you, you said about having the uh, like something else going on, the chase, and that was good to hear about just the reaffirming of yeah, I do want to have something else. Yeah. In this scene to make it feel more exciting. Yeah, and um, what, but what, I didn't know what that was. Um. So sorry, I, I cut you off there. Um, oh, okay, yeah, good. Um, we found in the top 100, a lot of them had a second thing happening. They had, a, you know, either a halfway point story element introduced, or they had a, like something else going on in the background. It wasn't just, hey, look at this car, look at this vehicle, and then let's get out of here. It was like. There was more than that and uh you know it's cool to know that in your mind you were like okay we gotta add it can't just be this there's got to be a little bit more to the scene here um so when when you're at this point you know you're about a week in uh where do you go from here you know like this to a lot of people this might look done you know a lot of people would be like this is my submission but you had you know three and a half weeks ahead of you um what do you do from here? So uh, 
I think when when I talked to you and you had suggested uh, like something behind it coming along, just sort of sucking up all of this dust and dirt and debris, and I thought that was sick, <laughs> and I had no idea what that vehicle was going to look like, basically. So I had a couple of different goes at modeling things, and I couldn't quite come up with a feel. Um, and I didn't really want to use any like uh, or too many like kit bashed elements for my hero objects. Um, yeah. But eventually, as it was getting into the week and I had work projects to get done, I sort of committed to developing the um, the little dropship, which is a whole load of kit bash 3D elements from the mission to Minerva, as well as a whole load of other little trusses and missile elements and things. So, yeah, yeah, okay. So is that is that the the dropship from the Minerva pack, like with stuff yeah. added, or is it just the dropship from the pack? It's had stuff added, and I redid the UVs on it so I could repaint it in my own cool. color scheme and things, just to uh, yeah, bake it into the world a little bit better. Add the same sort of red and white uh, mm. split tone color scheme going on. Yeah, yeah. And the missiles, man, like, what is this all in one project file or are you splitting this up into different project files? Yeah, this is all one project file. So oh. this is like a more. So the, the missile sim is actually just lots and lots of circles uh, with pictures of smoke on them to keep it lightweight. Oh. Um, so they're all just set to always face camera. Um, the oh. system, if I go back to the scene file, but not that scene file. So it's emitting transparent images? Yeah. So if I go here, you can see that the dropship has a turret. The turret is always tracking the uh, ship itself, yeah. uh, but just a little bit behind. So it's it's always got like a it's got a look at constraint on it basically. Yeah. And as it's animated through in this simulation, <laughs> it's told to spawn all sorts of different images basically all the time. So the the missiles are three D geometry, but everything else is just lots and lots of circles. It's yeah, literally circles. Terrible. What? That's crazy. Yeah, so you can see it more there as you go around, but it's all just lots of circles. <laughs> you're not Thousands even not even circles. You're talking discs. Yeah, yeah, discs. Yeah, they're all 2D geometry, just told to wow. always face the camera. Same as uh, the ground hit explosions are just slowly growing explosions with uh, again some debris generated as it as they get the ground. Dude, that's um, so. That's that's such a great idea! <laughs> wow, that's so cool. It's a it's a really cool system in in Max. I think everyone who uses Max now has this TieFlow plugin installed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just fantastic for being able to quickly build out simulation work. And this whole missile system is just one system that generates missiles, generates muzzle flashes, generates smoke trails, and then checks to see whether it's hit something, and on that will generate some debris and some dust on the on the hits that's crazy it's a really robust little system so um, this is something that really you fun. you set up or this was something that was like already made no this is my setup yeah, wow Dude. No, node by node and then hoping that each addition actually made it better and not worse that oh man that i could get lost in that like and just you know set up a cool system that works and puts out a cool visual thing like that is that's fun. How long did that take to set up? That was, well, the, the base setup was probably done in a day or two, but then it was tweaked for the entire time. I mean, the community on the Discord was really helpful here. There was a lot of uh, comments that were like, the smoke's just looking too uniform, or it's looking too wavy, or the hits aren't quite right. And so somebody, I wish I could remember who it was, it might have been like Ice Cream Man or something like that, oh, Jen yeah. said about putting some noise onto the circles as they generated and so that was i think one of the biggest uh, changes to happen was to have this uh extra swirling happening as the as the uh as they come down Ooh, dude that is absolute. crazy that that is just a bunch of discs it looks great yeah the lighting wow. helped as a lot of tricks and bump mapping each of the circles helped as well to keep them really? uh to keep them feeling right, and then just a lot of uh, After Effects and Da Vinci masking to make it interact with the ship a little bit better as wow. the ship punches through the hole. So, what um, do you have? Do you have a, a render of like uh, before you hit post? Um, uh, not post production. Do I have that? basically post production? Just your yeah, your raw render, and then. And then your final to I kind of that. see what you did in After Effects or DaVinci. I might be able to find it quickly. It's about 
And I've done that. Where is it going to be? And we're going to take it here. We're going to take it to in our last 10 minutes. We're going to take it to the the chat here. If you guys have any questions for Sam, um, man, that's 30 minutes flew. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was ridiculous. Uh, we're going to take it to the chat. If you guys have any questions right, for right. Sam, hit at Punisher in the chat so I can like see the little orange little thing, the orange tag. And then uh, we'll throw some questions from you guys to Sam as well, because I'm sure you guys have some good ones. So this is the uncomped file. So the uh, I oh. rendered it in a couple of different passes. So the just circles uh, causing the smoke, I actually rendered as a separate pass completely and comped them in afterwards because uh, the number of transparency rays that were required to render it cleanly was really high. And I wanted to prototype this element of the scene a lot more than having the uh, circles chugging down the, the render every, yes. every time I wanted to iterate. Absolutely. Um, same with the ground smoke and all of those effects and all of the small jets coming off the vehicle. They're all separate uh, Phoenix FD sims done in other Mac scenes and then rendered out separately in like V-Ray and brought back into After Effects to come back in. Okay, got you, got you. Um, how long did you give yourself to put all of this together? Do you have like a week? Do you have a day? What was it? Uh, just the comping. Yes. The comping was... Uh, yeah, it was about an evening, uh, a long oh. evening, but it was about an evening. It's, it all came together quite easily just from, yeah, having everything rendered from the same camera the whole time and mirroring lighting setups across render engines made things really easy. Um, there wasn't a lot of color correction that needed to be done because of that and stuff. That's great. When it all comes together so easily like that is just wonderful. Um, let's uh, let's take it to the chat here and see if you guys have any questions for Sam. Again, hit me with at Punisher. Uh, that way I can see them. Let's see, we've answered a lot of these already. How long have you uh, been working in 3D? Yeah, about uh, well, about five years I've been working professionally doing it. Uh, okay, Zero has a question. How can he learn 3D fast? And it just got to be a fast <laughs> answer too. The fast answer is to go and watch Ian Hubert's quick videos and then go and watch <laughs> a guy called Jesse Patella's simulation stuff and go and watch Southern Shorty's uh, little how to animate things quickly videos. Just speed run YouTube tutorial. That's good. Can you say those three guys one more time? Because that's, that's good uh, stuff. Southern Shorty, Jesse Patella, Ian Hubert's. Those are probably my three main guys. Cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome uh what made you get into 3d i think we've covered that as well didn't we yeah just a, a an inkling that maybe it would be easy and then being wrong for like six years they want to know what render engine this is this is redshift for the most of it and then v-ray for smoke and dust hits which is actually probably the wrong way around to do that. So don't take my advice. Redshift's a lot better at smoke and dust and V-Ray's a lot better at environments, but <laughs> I did it backwards. <laughs> All good. Uh, uh, Michael says, what's the name of that little robot guy? He's called Huey after uh, the guys from uh, Silent Running. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if you've okay, ever okay. seen this uh, classic movie, this was a lot of my inspiration is little robots that just exist to take care of plants. And, oh, I uh, love that. That's a good idea. One of them that was killed during the movie was called Huey. And uh, yeah, I've always had an attachment to that as a character. That's cool. It was that 80s movie? It looks like the most 80s movie ever. Yeah, yeah it really is. It's very <laughs> old fashioned. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. All right, Fiji says, do you have any advice for art, artist block or burnout? Take a break. <laughs> Just don't work on something for a little while and let the idea come to you. I mean, if it if you're time pressed, then the best thing is I find to just go and watch a movie or, or see something else for a while and get inspired by that. The, uh, the block is definitely real and I definitely have taken a fair bit of time away from things before coming back to even just do this project. But uh, yeah, I think seeing The Martian and seeing June and things like that in the months ahead of this was like big, Oof. oh, I want to make those. Man, we rewatched Dune maybe like two weeks ago and it's like, oh, oh my goodness. 
I remember we were watching the Last of Us TV show, and like that's a good show, and but I was like, it still feels just like a TV show. I want something <laughs> more, and I was like, Dune. I remember that being Dune amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What a ah, what a great movie. It is fantastic. <sighs> But you're right. Yeah, go watch a movie. I was so inspired after watching that. I was like, I've been missing this in my life. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the number of CG artists that went away and just tried to remake flying dragonfly wings uh, was pretty high. Yeah, that was so cool. Um, Visual asks, when are we going to get the collector's edition toy version of this? <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if you can see my camera right now. Oh, what? There he is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I feel like I've uh, I put him up to that, but it's a work in progress. It's a little, Whoa, little guy. That's so cool. He's got little, little poseable arms and things. That's awesome. Wow. It was been the last uh, little while of deciding I wanted to have him as a little statue on my desk to be able to uh, have him about as a slightly earlier version. That's so cool. I love that. So there's more than one. Oh, I think in the world that this exists in, there were probably loads of them. It's a bit like probably astromechs in Star Wars, where they're all just utility droids just doing jobs and things. And then oh, the, this I mean, guy like, happens to have got in a bit over his head. The toys themselves, though, like there's more than one oh, physical yeah. toy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got a prototype. Maybe maybe Visual will reach out and and, uh, and buy one from Yeah, you. I can... <laughs> I'll release the 3D files for all of it at some point. Somebody can uh, do a, a better job of the cleanup than I did. That's great. Um, I think we got time for one more question in these last two minutes here. But Paul asks, how did you manage uh, life and this project during this project? Uh, probably demanding friends, suggesting that we go to the pub instead of me arguing, no, I need to get more work done. They're like, just take a break. And that uh, that helps a lot. I think uh, without people putting things into perspective, sometimes you can easily just go down a rabbit hole of this stuff, especially when you have simulations and textures. You can just keep zooming in closer and closer into each of those elements and get lost in it. And until somebody sort of stands behind you or you show it off on the Discord or something like that, and somebody's like, no, that's really good. And you're like, okay. I'll probably I'll leave that for now and I'm going to go go outside and do something else for a bit. Yeah, it's tough to know where you're at when it's just you. Um, you have no other reference points. Uh, but yeah, getting out and listening to your friends who are like, you know, <laughs> get off your computer. is probably yeah. a good move. Was it the same friends who were like, hey, do this challenge? Yeah, they were, they've been there the whole way. I mean, when we did the, uh, you did the hundred, uh, you know, the winner's announcement, we were yeah. all sitting in, we had a curry, we had some beers, oh. we were watching it. And I kind of sort of, wow, I've got top 100, this is incredible. And I've kind of relaxed into the evening. Uh, and then you showed top five and they went ballistic. They were, <laughs> they were <laughs> jumping so around cool. all over the place. That's so cool, man. Wow. Oh, that's awesome to hear. You know, it really is nice to hear that stuff because, uh, we're always just in the weeds with it, you know, yeah. so it's cool to zoom out as well and get that perspective too. So that's, that's awesome. But Hey, Sam, we got to let you go. Um, we're going to hop in with David Malore is next, um, doing the fourth place render. So, uh, much appreciated, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for showing off all of this expertise and, uh, that discs trick with the emitters, man. That's a good one. That's really good. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much, and thanks for putting on the competition. That's, yeah. uh, that's the main thing. Really uh, kicks everyone in the in the butt to get doing things. That's great. That's great. I should, I should do the same. I, <laughs> I didn't get, I didn't get a submission in this time, but it's okay. Maybe next time. Sam, thanks again, man. We'll catch you soon. Cool. Thanks very much, guys. Peace. <gasps> David, it's David. <gasps> What's up, dude? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh oh, I don't hear you. Oh crap! Yeah, we're, see, we're all in a Discord channel, right? So that's how we're hearing each other in real time. <clears throat> Where you at, David? Oh, there we go. Okay, here I am. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What's up? Hello. You switch. Yeah, yeah I hear Hello. you. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, cool. Switch What's back up? to your to your art. There you go. 
Here yeah. yeah, you built out a whole thing. How's it going? Sweet. Good, I man. Did, How yeah. are you? I made, a, I made a whole a whole presentation, whole business presentation for this. <laughs> I, I love it. Take it super serious. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, I'm chilling. You know, I have yeah. a little cold, but I'm enjoying some tea. Uh, and yeah. Um, yeah, hanging out. So it's good. It's a good time. Yeah. I'm just coming off my little, uh, I had a little bit of a funk last week as well. So I know, I know that feeling. Indeed. Um, yeah. So you are going to be at NAB coming up, uh, April, what, 15th through like the 20th or 19th or something? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm presenting on Monday. So I think that's the 17th. Yeah. Monday at um, 1 so yeah, I'll be there. At the and Maxon be... booth. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, and I'll be talking about uh, a process very similar to what I did for this, which was I've been creating stuff using VR and then I bring it into C4D and I do all my lights and uh, shading and just kind of give it life inside of there. Whoa, that's a very um, unique approach. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah. What, um, what, what, what? gave you that idea to start doing that oh gosh um v vr modeling has been around for like a couple of years now but i never really got into it i tried medium a couple of years ago and i just could not wrap my head around it i think part of it was just like it was a, it was a new interface to to navigate right so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um I tried it on like a project or two and I was like, uh, maybe not right now. Um, and then when Substance 3D Modeler came out last year, which was like the, the VR desktop modeling hybrid, I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. I could get into this where I could do like a little bit of a little bit of both in the same program. Uh, well, what ended up happening is that I liked the navigation in Modeler in the VR space so much that I just only made stuff in VR and didn't even bother with the the desktop portion of it. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and then I would just take my models and you know run them through ZBrush or anything to to clean up the the meshes and then bring them into Cinema 4D and uh, give give like more life to it. And so I just kind of found my style uh, through doing that. That's amazing. That, I love that. It's a it's a really unique approach you know i have heard of it i've never messed with it myself i always you know i, I think i saw nico doing it at one point um just mm -hmm. just for fun just to you know do like a little painting or something i think he actually did it in one of the render challenges we did with people um he he, oh, nice. he used that and um i thought it was interesting you know but i didn't know that your setup was you know your piece of art was done using vr modeling that's crazy so what do you, obviously you need a vr headset yeah right and yeah yeah the so i've got a controllers. i've got a rift s um yeah um and like i know there's some newer versions out right now this one works perfectly fine um and yeah substance 3d modeler is the program i use i started playing around with quill recently and that's a lot of fun because you can kind of do uh like like it's almost like using adobe animate but in 3d uh, or like flash yeah um wow yeah did you and... start oh sorry go ahead i'm so sorry oh no worries i was just gonna say that it's it's fun because it kind of blurs the line between like physically creating something and uh creating something digitally because you're, you're you're building with your hands and your arms and you're using your face to kind of move around uh as if you were to sculpt something in real life so that's one thing i really like about it yeah i you know i'm i'm a very kind of hands-on person i love like so for example i i love playing music i love playing the drums mm -hmm. of course that's very hands-on um yeah but when you sit me behind like a keyboard with minty drums uh in like ableton or something i'm like this feels so wrong <laughs> i don't like this i <laughs> i want to be hitting the drums i want to be moving my body and uh that's so I funny can, yeah, you know, I can see how the same thing applies for for art. You know, um, how often do you say like go to a coffee shop or something and 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 draw? Because you enjoy drawing, right? I do enjoy drawing, um, and I have I have my sketchbook and I have like an iPad that I sketch on. Um, 
I don't go to coffee shops all that much. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but well, regardless I do... of the place, regardless of the place, but you know, <laughs> um, no, but I do, I do like to sketch a lot at home. Um, and like, if I go over to friend, like a friend's house or something, I'll bring my, my sketch pad or something like that. And just we'll hang out and we'll throw on a TV show and just sketch for a couple hours or, or whatever. Oh, that's great. Um, and that's actually where like a lot of the, a lot of this came from was it just started out as just like a couple little sketches. Um, but as I've gotten more into the VR stuff, I've ended up doing a lot of my my sketching and prototyping like on the go in 3D uh, in VR. You know what? I just realized. Can you can you loop your submission here? Um, your art. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Your mm -hmm. submission that that. <laughs> yeah, loop loop the art here because uh, people people need to see yeah. what we're talking about. That's yeah so it started out as a sketch a little drawing uh just like some like i started with the blocking out of like the buildings and stuff like that but then i was just over at a friend's house and i just started sketching out like the vehicle and like the character and just you know the inspiration pinterest surfing trying to get ideas for what I wanted this whole world to look like. It's looking a little laggy on my end. Um, and I think it's looking a little laggy on the stream. Let me see if I can this? screen okay. share. <gasps> Can't. Sometimes my computer starts up and doesn't recognize my main project drive. And this is one of those times and I'm not restarting my computer. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Uh, how, how bad is it? Because it looks fine on my end. Um, it's choppy. You know, people are getting still uh -oh. still frames. You know, every <laughs> every while. It's okay though. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Mm. Um, people get the idea. People yeah, get the okay. idea. It's beautiful. Like, it's very vibrant. Cool. Um, uh, I guess I have so many questions. But let's start from the beginning. <laughs> how did you come up with this idea? Uh, so I'm a I'm a big anime games nerd so um i loved i love all the the vehicle designs and like the proportions that uh, akira Tor Man toriyama uses in, in dragon ball and Sweet. uh what is it called sandland the other short series he has um so i just immediately was like okay i want to make something that's a, a tribute to that style of work sweet so this is like a very a very like condensed form of the the inspiration that I got for the bike um and then with the buildings uh like we've been to oh. Japan a couple times and I I love like dude the variety of buildings and all the big neon signs and stuff like that and so I really wanted to create something that was had a little bit of a futuristic flavor to it but uh felt very much like a Japanese uh like futuristic coastal town yeah i i love uh, so this I, reference here is beautiful um that pixel art on those buildings like that third one with the traffic cones and the moss on it like that is yeah i love amazing. this amazing oh yeah and what's that one with the 8299 what is that from oh that is um it's from an artist uh art here putra i think is, is how his name is pronounced uh he's done a lot of uh, music videos for artists, um, one of which is, have you heard of uh, Crystal Dolphin by Englewood? Mm-mm. Uh, okay, definitely check that out. Uh, he did a music video for for that, for him, for that, and it turned out amazing because it's just like, it's it's all 3D, but it's got these super flat, vibrant colors, and oh, it's just eye candy, every frame of it. Crystal Dolphin by yeah. uh, Englewood? Englewood, yeah. Okay, I'm just going uh, with, with an E. Englewood. All right, I'm gonna remember that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I love music it's, videos. It's, it's for... so good. Mm -hmm. Um, no, this is this is wonderful. This gets me amped just seeing this reference yeah. here. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then one of the things that I once I figured out the setting for for this world that I was building, I was trying to figure out what time of day I wanted. And initially, I was gonna do like a like a bright sunny day along the coast, but I ended up deciding on like oh. a sunset because I really, I really wanted all those nice warm pinks and oranges and yellows uh, fading into more of like a darker blues and purples to just uh, 
just give that scene a lot more more richness to it man this is uh, making me feel stuff here i lo this is amazing <laughs> i love this man uh yeah those colors man geez those colors mm -hmm. are wonderful and i love that in the bottom left down there too that's so simple yeah. like i just want i want to play games like this i think that's why uh you know we've known each other for a little bit and um mm -hmm. you know we we got really into that what was that game westwood um, east east eastward eastward yeah, <laughs> yeah. eastward yeah yeah that game man like the design in that game was super cool so it's cool to see oh, like i love that yeah i, I love it man all right I, i'm also, I'm, 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 I'm down for the ride uh, yeah, um, and also just you know, like we we both went to Camp Mograph last year, and every day we'd go out to the, the the whole group would go out to the dock and watch the the sunset every night. And it was just like I love yeah. that color palette. It's the best. It's just yeah, it's so relaxing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, All right, so yeah, where where do we go? Oh yes. Yeah. So sketches. So like I said, I didn't do a ton of like. I didn't have like a whole like sketch. I didn't have a whole smattering of sketches for the characters and the vehicles. I kind of, mm -hmm. I had an idea of what I wanted to do from the inspiration. And I did like a first pass of a character and a vehicle. And then I was just like, all right, this is good. I just want to start sketching in VR. And so this is where I started with, with these guys. Um, I'll, I'll get to this little, this little manhole character uh, once we start diving into the C45. That's great. Um, but yeah, so like just the main character, uh, just like taking notes from like, uh, what is it? Cyberpunk, that, mm -hmm. that one video game uh, slash series, having like an outfit like that. And then doing the, the Toriyama-esque, like kind of squashed, compacted uh, motorcycle. I love that like blocky a, look. It's so... A delivery ah. truck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's already tangible here. Like your render, I feel like I just can like bite it. I just want to eat it. But like this right here, I can I still feel like I can like pull this off the page and like play with it and feel those edges. I love that blockiness, man. It's great. Yeah, and and thankfully when I started building this in VR, it like translated super super well. So I was really happy about that. Uh, and then here are some very initial sketches of the mm. the actual background scenery. Um, so in this, I had like a more like future futuristic uh vibe going for it and as i started actually building the 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 scene elements i i wanted it to be more like uh feel feel a little bit more closer to modern and not like way too future because this is like a it's a small town on the coast it's not like gonna be crazy developed like a, a major metropolitan area so i wanted to have like a little bit of uh like like an old school feel to it this is advanced. Do you do this for every project? Like, are you really, like, you're doing these drawings before you even touch 3D? Like, uh, sometimes I just go straight. Actually, a lot of the times I just go straight into 3D. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah. this is like very well thought out. Um, and you're you're planning on modeling all this versus pulling like Kitbash elements or. Mhm. Mm yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. Wow. Um. And then even all the the sign graphics I did by hand. I just once oh I God. once I built once I built all of these these sign elements over here and UV them out. I just created a bunch of templates, threw them all on my iPad, and I would just sketch them out. And uh, so there's I forget how many varieties of signs I did. This is like the bulk of them right here. And so some of them would just be original illustrations that I would just kind of play around with others would be like the like this the dog i would take like a 3d render and just do a really cool stylistic trace over that because i really like that the element man um but then i even i even made like a a little glyph system <laughs> just by taking letters and kind of making them blobby shaped and adding and subtracting different parts of a letter and so this actually reads out endless engines uh this this says dog oh i can kind of see it yeah, yeah yeah um and then this is just like a random three letter word so i chose ace for for this part over here jeez man um yeah and oh so that goodness. was really fun and then i would take that uh so these are all like the base colors and then what i would do is i would take that and when i brought it into cinema 4d i would set it up in a shader so 
using a random effector, I would drive like a little bit of a color shift. So sometimes this would turn out to be like a reddish background and sometimes it would be blue or just like the regular green that you see here. Shoot, Because there would be there would be multiple copies of these these signs in the yes. scene, but I didn't want them all to be the same because that would yeah. start to get a little bit flat. So uh, doing just like that little that little trick to vary it up a bit helped so much. That's amazing. Yes, I, I'm already you're already giving me ideas on how to use C4D differently. I <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and then here's the 3D. So oh, okay. um, this the, is all in VR. Character, yeah, this, so this is in VR. So what I did was uh, not not the painting stuff. This, these are snapshots from Substance Painter. Mm -hmm. um, but what I did was once I had a general idea of what I wanted the the character and the bike to look like, I took the like a placeholder bike that I had in the scene from very very early on, and sculpted my elements around the character, like the little the the, the wood puppet. Uh, from mm -hmm. from cinema and also just like some very general block shape for the motorcycle mm -hmm. and sculpted that out in there once that was good took it out of there retopologized it using just like a very quick z remesher and then a quick uv unwrap brought it into substance painter and then just sort of playing around with different uh like custom smart materials in substance painter to create like the nice little edge wear on the, the bike and I think like a little bit of like that like the uneven paint yeah all the, the imperfections and the chips and stuff yeah yeah I got mm -hmm. you yeah little, little scratches on the glass and as you can see here like the the glass on the bike was was way higher up initially mm. and what it end, what I ended up doing is because it was blocking the face entirely in the final render I just scooched it down and it turned out just fine oh that's great instinct yeah good good eye yeah. on that for sure yeah um and then here's here's some of the buildings so again all made in vr and then brought into substance painter to do some some nice texturing dude so cool I, oh ah i like this is such a great <laughs> workflow i love this 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 seems like so different than what i'm used to in 3d and that's great because i feel like i need to mix it up at this point you know I, i've done the same workflow for so long and mm -hmm. you know i need to spice things up a little bit this this is awesome i love the the output of this is very you know video gamey very cartoony and i'm just such a sucker yeah. for that because i've been doing photo real for so long and uh you know it's nice but I, I would really like to start getting into this kind of setup here this kind of look man this is incredible thank you um for for this so once i had a, a general idea of how i wanted the building elements like the, the the paint on the walls the the metal on the pipes all that kind of stuff i just was able to save those out as smart materials and actually all the materials that you see here and on the previous page once i had that system set up i was able to kick out all the materials for each model within a day whoa because because it's just like okay I know exactly how everything wants to look now. All I need to do is just tweak colors here and there, and I've got what I want for every scene. That's great. Yeah, I need to learn Substance yeah. as well, man. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I, I I use Substance Painter maybe once or twice before on a project, but I didn't use it as heavily as I did with this, and now it's like I, I can't go back. Cool. It's just too good. Cool. That's awesome. I'm glad that you know people are learning stuff through these projects. That's the that's the point. Mm -hmm. So yeah uh here's some some very early works in progress um so this mm -hmm. is this is the very first scene like like the day you announced that that contest um i download the project scene i was just like okay i have a pretty i have a pretty good idea of what i want to do i want to do like the the semi-futuristic coastal town like very japanese city pop future funk type vibes um get a cool motorcycle in there. So I just start blocking everything out. Um, so here's like a first initial blocking out. This is like a near final blocking out on the, the right. Uh, for the cloud background, I actually used a uh, Houdini. So I, oh. I sculpted, I, I made like a general volume in Houdini 
or in in modeler kick that out of there and brought it into houdini and then there's a couple like little note there's some nodes in houdini that can turn it into a like a cloud volume and you can add noise to give it sort of that i guess that cloud look yeah uh and you can also make it loop in there too so i just oh cool set all that up uh kicked out that volume and then rendered it as like a backplate for my scene uh, so those clouds that we're seeing on the bottom left are the clouds in the final uh this is an early version of it but yeah got it, much. got it got it um and then this this bottom right render is uh like a early final ish render where i was discovering that i didn't want to have like i when I rented this out, it was like, oh, it's it's looking a little bit too cool for what I wanted. I wanted to bring back more of that warmth, more of those reds in there. Yeah. Uh, the signs themselves were looking a little bit blown out. So um, it was great to like have time. Like I, I gave myself enough time to be able to work out those little kinks. Uh, That's good. Because, That's like, very important. Because the, yeah, because like this right here looks like a final render. But for me, it was like, no, I this it's not like exactly what i want so how much time do you give yourself like in a project uh contingency time you know like you have uh, you what five weeks to do this and uh mm -hmm. did you have like a schedule that you mapped out roughly like by week one i want xyz week two week three or did you just kind of like go into the wind and like kind of see what came came of it it was a bit of that yeah um i i worked on this like maybe a couple hours a day like an hour or two just sort of chipped away at little things just whatever i kind of wanted to accomplish in the moment mm -hmm. um and i think That's that good. worked out pretty well i think i could have done like a little bit better organizing like okay i want this done by this time and i sort of had to to set those those benchmarks near the end of it because the yes. last couple days i i spent a lot more time getting it finished up but I, I didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel panicked about getting it done. It was just kind of like, it, it was almost like the, a final polish point where I just wanted it to make sure it looked really good. And I was really, I was having fun with it. And that's, that's perfect. That's just, that's all just, you need. Just, yeah, and just wanted to, to make this look as, as good as I wanted it to look. And I think that the way I managed my time early on gave me a bit of that buffer to do so. That's, that's perfect. Yeah, I, I think um, for me personally, uh, you know, I guess this kind of goes back to all the stuff that I've been thinking about since the beginning of this year, but uh, you, it's really hard to make stuff when there's stakes on uh, or pressure is on. And mm -hmm. especially it's difficult to make stuff that you think is good because you think in your mind it, it needs to be the best um, quickly. And that's just not realistic. And um, I think what you're doing here by just diving in and having fun uh, with no real schedule or timeline, there's no pressure. You you did a good job of taking the pressure off and just having fun. And then once you kind of let your inspiration go and like you've seen that, you know, there's something here. There's probably something here. Uh, then you can probably get to like the schedule stuff later. Um, it seems like you mm -hmm. got a real nice, healthy approach to this. Um, yeah. So we have like five minutes left. That was the fastest oh, 30 gosh, minutes we do. ever. Wow. Um, so we can like, do you want to uh, just take it to Q&A here? I'm sure everyone yeah. has questions for you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pop open the, the Cinema 4D file just so it kind of plays in the background. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Orbit around while, that, maybe. While, yeah, oh, while, so while folks cool. are asking questions. That's great. Yeah, so guys, please, um, at Ponisher in the chat here so I can... Oh, we got Winbush in the house. What up, <laughs> What's up, Winbush? We got Fried Pixels. What's up, James? Hey. Yeah. The, all, all the all the good folks the mograph fam yeah exactly man. yeah um james you going to nab this year you should better <laughs> um but uh yes we'll let these oh kenza's in here too yes hey kenza <laughs> that's great 
That's great. You got some support here. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, hit me with them at Ponishers, guys. Ask some questions here. We got another, we got like five minutes left, four minutes left. Um, so, ah, uh, James. I'll see you next time, though. I'll see you next time. Oh, McDaffy's in here too. Got some O toy. So good. Um, all right. Why did I add the mouth in the thumbnail? Oh, that's a that's a good question. So yes, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, I added a mouth to your render in the thumbnail. I, I, I did. I, I I thought about giving you crap about it, but I was like, eh, no, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's a thumbnail it, it thing. Doesn't... It's yeah, like clarity. Yeah, exactly. It's a clarity thing. It's like um, mm -hmm. you'll read the face a little bit more when uh sure. yeah when you see a face you know so i added a big mm -hmm. old cheesy anime smile to it to like kind of yeah <laughs> that's so funny um it, it, it kind of has like a like a calvin and Hobbes smile yeah for sure sorta. like yeah i knew the people that knew especially you you'd be like uh what did you do that <laughs> for <laughs> yeah youtube marketing y'all um let's see how do you deal with management, uh, time management and burnout? When you got CG um, as your day job, um, and then you're trying to do CG for a hobby, like how does that work? It's a good question. That is a good question. Um, I don't know if I have like the, the best like time management tips or anything like that. Uh, I mean, the stuff that I do for my, my day job, I really like too. And there's lots of opportunity to explore for future projects at work. Uh, for anyone who doesn't mm. know, I work at Wyden and Kennedy on the, the motion team there. Um, it, it's, it's a great group and there's a ton of talent on there and we all, we all uh, have different skills that we can bring and share with each other and I don't find myself ever feeling, I mean, I can't say ever, but like, I don't find myself super burned out because the projects that I, I get to work on in, in my day job, uh, also translate over to, uh, translate into skills and techniques that I can use for my personal passion projects. And so. I would say that I rarely feel burnt out from doing personal work and day job work um, on top of that. That's great. That's great, man. Keep that going for as long as you can. Um, yeah. Because I would assume that in your day job, you get like different projects coming in all the time. So it's always fresh, mm -hmm. I would assume, right? Yeah. There's always something new to learn, especially yeah. for like the longer term projects in there. Um, let's see. We got time for like one more. Uh... How long did your render take? <laughs> How long did the render take? Uh, it took about two to three hours, actually. Really? Um, yeah, and I actually just got one of the new the new MacBooks, so I was able to put it through its paces like the week of render time. And you know, it, it's not like a forty ninety level graphics card, but like it it chewed through the frames pretty quickly. Um, Jeez, man! And that's also cool. just uh, just a lot of optimizing. So like. A lot of these are instances in the scene, and then I have grass in here that's using it's using like a redshift proxy object instead of just like a cloner or a hair, and so that helped render it a lot quicker. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, just a lot of optimizing there brought it down to a, a cool two to three hours render time. Heck yeah, dude, that's incredible! <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, well, hey man, apologies we didn't get through the whole the whole thing but um that was a that was a very rich uh beautiful overview of your scene um i learned yeah i mean that was just that whole time was inspiring for me um but if you guys are at Thanks, nab man. this year in vegas go check out david malore he'll be at the maxon booth on monday at 1 30 that is the 17th the 17th yeah yeah april 17th uh, in Vegas. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you guys are at NAB, go check them out. I'm going to make it there. Um, so, yeah, man, I'll see you in Vegas in a couple weeks. Yeah, see you there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so Coming much up. for uh, yeah, for hopping you. in. And uh, congrats yeah. again on the win, man. It's super thank awesome. You. And and thanks for putting these these competitions on there. They're a lot of fun. Absolutely, man. We'll we'll talk uh, we'll talk soon. I'll see you. I'll see you at NAB. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. See ya. Peace out. Later. Later.
All right, y'all. Uh, we got through two interviews so far. We got three more to go. We're going to do third place uh, is up next. So we are talking to, well, let's just find out. I think it's all queued up. Let's switch on over. So do you want to you want to hit that switch? It's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. Things are happening. All right, it's brewing in the background. I can hear them. They're working. Oh, Hello. snap. Donald, what's up, man? Hello, man. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Excited. A little bit scared, but Oh, uh, don't yeah. worry about it. We're just going to chat. Um First things first, can you pull up your art for me? Can you just loop it uh, for everybody yep. and kind of see? I hope it's smooth enough. Autoplay. Can you see it? Yeah, it's uh, lagging a little bit, but let's. it could just be Discord. Let me... Oops, it's <laughs> opening like... <light. laughs> that looks hilarious. The initial version, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try to see if you can just loop the art. Dude, I Ugh, this this render's so good. It's too good. I should press repeat. Yeah, all good, all good. Um, how are you doing? Where are you from? So I live in Albania, central Central Europe. Yeah. It's I don't know. Uh, it's evening here. What else <laughs> am I supposed? To... <laughs> I've never been it's... to Albania. Um, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll make it out there. It's but... near Italy, near Italy, like between Italy and Greece. But I, okay. I don't know how to be more precise. No, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's all I need to know. Um, dude, how th this is, this is incredible. This art, man, like everything here is ridiculous. Your first off, your animation that you're doing is absurd. Your render quality is absurd. This, the idea itself is ridiculous. The the smoke sims and the flames are ridiculous. Like I know this was in the Embergen release trailer, right? So yep, you yep. use some Embergen. Um, yeah, like you have a pilot getting into the cockpit of that thing. The the way you warp out and distort the air and the environment when that explosion goes off, it feels so good. And you see those missiles coming from the background all the way from the top of the shot. Like, dude, uh, how long have you been working in 3D? So I started taking it seriously about uh, four years ago. Yes. And I've been like doing it as a professional job, I would say in two years. Okay, the okay. Last two years. So what it's you... been four years completely focused in 3D. Okay, okay, got you, got you. Before those four years, were you like playing around? I was testing basically i might have worked in 3d for like four months in eight years entirely just okay playing around for two weeks stopping and trying again you know on and off wow man i tried some game dev mostly 2d stuff small games but it didn't really go as planned it wasn't didn't get viral you know yeah yeah so... for sure for sure no this is this is ridiculous for four years to be honest like this is so good man um what program are you using some using blender yeah exclusively like m almost on all stages like 2d and everything yeah okay awesome awesome how do you like how do you even come up with this idea you know what are you into what games are you playing what movies are you watching that that inspire this kind of art almost almost anything sci-fi really okay so it's if it's creatures like the, the thing is which people might find it a bit weird after looking at other work of myself like uh, basically sorry i need to mute something just all good yeah all good all good for a Take moment your time. no worries okay can you hear me now yeah. oh no, i can't hear you now in Discord, I can't hear you. Yo, yo, yo. Test, test, test. You're, okay, yeah. but just there's an echo. 
that I mm. don't know how to how to fix really. Is it? Can you hear me still? Yep. Yep. Is it you still? perfectly? Okay. Cool. Cool. Sweet. Um, is the echo gone? Yeah, not really, and I I'm I'm not sure how to to fix it, but uh, it just makes it a bit tough to to talk when you hear yourself like an echo, you know? Yeah, sort of. I believe it's from the screen share. Okay, I might need to. Yep. Uh, so. Oh, uh, turn off your camera. Oh, okay. Watch right? I think turn off the Oops, camera. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You guys get the inner workings of the stream here. Is that better? Yep, yep. Per All right. Hey, there you go, Soto. Crushing oh, it. Sorry. Crushing it. Yeah, solving problems, man. Um, so, I mean, what? You, like, I, I'm, I'm seeing. You are seeing. Like, uh, maybe some Edge of Tomorrow. Maybe some. Uh, what's that video game with Ashley Birch? Love that movie. Uh, uh, the one with like. There is a game with games. robotic creatures. Yeah, that one. That one. Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm seeing those two things. Like, uh, have you played those games? Is that, is am I right on the reference here, or what I've, else do you got? I've seen. Yeah, I've seen the movie. Absolutely love it. I've tried the game. The thing is, like, I'm I'm mostly I like creature design a lot. So that's yeah. the thing I do at work. Oh, cool. And here I'm just trying to to mix like robots with creatures, and that's this is the end result basically. That's incredible. So what do you do for work? How, how like, are you doing organic creature design? Are you doing yep, like sculpting yep. or, or organic you... designs? Drawing? I do both the entire pipeline, basically from, from 2d sketch, 3d sculpt, rigging, skinning, and final animation. Wow. Okay. So you're, you're doing this all in 3d. You're not doing like, uh, like miniatures, like actual hands-on, like miniature sculpting. You're doing 3d mm. like ZBrush. I, I, I do it only all in blender everything oh wow okay in blend so I, I i've actually printed some of my sculptures some of my designs yeah but mostly it's for games and, and animation and movie what got you into that what like how did you find that path well i i, I i'm i remember the first jurassic park from childhood and yeah. i think i just got obsessed with dinosaurs back then <laughs> and i would play around with clay and that kind of stuff you know watch the movies over and over and documentaries and looking at uh, uh, wildlife documentaries and that's that's how it naturally I did I realized that uh, if I want to recreate that kind of stuff I need to learn some kind of 3d software and that's how it happened basically it was an old passion that gradually converted into something else that's that's wonderful man that sounds organic and natural and uh i don't know it's all it's all just kind of like i don't know being clarified for me that when you're doing it for fun and you don't really have an end goal with it and you just keep doing it for fun it will Absolutely. really grow into something special um so that's really really cool to see so walk us through here we got about I don't know 20 minutes walk us through the the process for this thing man like where, where do you start how do you create so initially like the first moment i i, I heard there the word engines when you announced the the challenge yeah i immediately want to do a running robot and like try to mix my ability in creature design with with robotics yeah I had been already practicing, if I can share a, a quick screenshot, I had been practicing robot design, but never like managed to finish a project. I see. And I usually, I used all the hype and excitement from, from the challenge to actually finish something. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's perfect. 
So this is like the first attempt. And I don't know if it's visible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I just I need to put this on repeat. Somehow the play is okay there you go so basically i just got a, a free model of a lion running low poly stuff just to get something quick a quick idea so that i could in a sense can you hear me right yeah yeah, yeah. okay perfect so the idea was to to get this running robot i added a pilot some low poly quick stuff initially the the scene was going to be in in the desert yeah so this is pretty simple you know just to get a feeling of does it actually look cool does it have potential yes or no that that was all yeah and i felt confident that i could actually pull something something out of this something interesting amazing all low poly yeah. that kind of stuff it gradually evolved i i added the scenery with rocks and cliffs this is uh, still an early stage before i decided to completely shift the the design of the world so yeah this, initially the creature was going to the robot actually was going to jump from the cliff transform so it was a completely different theme it was going to be made like out of uh, scrap parts as if the the pilot designed something in their garage with with whatever they could find yeah but later i thought like maybe i need to add a little bit more drama and excitement and i decided to go for a battle scene oh a battle dude that's a uh, it's very so this ambitious is a huge change yep so this is where like everything changed actually I did a like very quick animation of a dog or cheetah. At least I took inspiration from those creatures. Kept it all low poly. Placed here the the enemy ship and the like the main ship, the main platform. Yeah. The whole idea was that our our main characters were being attacked, and there were only a few seconds to escape and and survive the final explosions with the trails of the rockets oh. and they're like they had this effect of a loading screen that you know something is about to happen you know you can see it in the distance yeah it's being filled until they they and with the hope of of filling the viewer with excitement so something is about to happen we just have to wait for the rockets to to reach the target that's perfect this man. was the main idea with the composition with the curvature and everything it's already such a great idea and you're doing such a good job of blocking it out in a very simple way to prove that there's something that it here. works yeah yep, yep, exactly so here i i start experimenting with with volumetrics and fires oh, i haven't wow. hadn't really done this before like i got a bit surprised when it got featured into the ember gen trailer because it's like my first time playing with fire <laughs> pun intended but uh, like fire and smoke and and this kind of stuff this is crazy this is like we're seeing this come to life before our eyes this is so crazy everything's getting a little bit better with each iteration yep. all right so we're Still looping version 10 like now okay wow so you have your your smoke sims in you have your main ship pretty modeled in you have your background yeah. ship pretty modeled in you have the character itself uh the character looks pretty complete the robot itself is still like there's more details finished yeah yep yep absolutely so i kept the shell until the very early later stages uh -huh. because i wanted to make sure i got the silhouette right I, I, it was bulky enough and strong enough until i i decided to add the final details and are you like modeling all this stuff um or are these assets yeah. or what 
No, this is like the only assets that I used here that w were not mine were the, the clouds background. Yeah. The, the human topology, the main topology with a, a very generic human rig that you get from Blender. Mm -hmm. And I believe somewhere here is like one of your scratch imperfect <laughs> imperfection <laughs> textures that I got for free, I don't know, two years ago, was it? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember correctly. That's funny. So it's somewhere in here. Everything else is is like my assets, basically. Wow. Designed some of them for scratch for this project. And I also recycled a robot that I designed for, uh, I believe, your second ever 3D challenge. Oh, so I wow. stripped parts from that robot and uh, like I feel the, the empty spaces in, in the ship and the enemy ship and that kind of stuff. What so I, I did recycle. You know, that's good. They are all my assets. No, that's good. That's good. That just goes back to the point where I was saying um, with Sam, like, you know, you never know what's going to happen. As long as you keep working on your on your craft, on your passion, you're paving the way for your future self. So you're going to have so much more to work with if you just, you know, stick with it. Um, yep. But what gave you the idea for this guy in the background? Because that is so scary to me, dude. No, no, this is this was a surprise to me too. Because the initial idea, basically, I was going to fill the hangar with uh, replicas of the running robot. Okay. To give a, a more dramatic uh, look, and to, I would add pilots trying to get into the, their cabins to escape burning in the fire and the heat and everything. But uh, I just put the robot that I used in your second challenge, I placed it there as a placeholder. And what happened is there was not enough time to, to actually change it and update it. Oh. So I'm That's jumping great. like to a more advanced version. So I just left it there. I had no idea actually. I forgot about it that it had that menacing look, you know? And I just realized it during the stream where you guys were saying like, look at the bad guy in the background, like oh, looking all menacing and wow, everything. Wow, dude. Like, it was a surprise. Oh yeah, I, I left him there and uh, it was <laughs> une unexpected for me too. Wow, that's, I love it, man. So wow, there was no awesome. story behind that really. It was an, a happy accident, I, I, could, I would say. Wow, I would say so too. That is crazy. Yeah, like that's... That, there's so much going on with that guy. He's like, he caused all of this and he doesn't <laughs> care. Like the, this thing is blowing. He's like the T, the T-1000. He's like, nothing's gonna <laughs> going stop to get me. out of the fire yet. Oh, dude, that is too cool. So are you flipping it to just try and yep, see exactly. what's missing? At this stage, I, I flipped it to, to get a better feeling like of the composition and basically like uh, scaling up and down certain parts of the scene to see how they fit, how to make them look better. I believe I increased the scale of the wing of mm -hmm. our... Perspective, like a fresh eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's super helpful. You you switch back and forth and because sometimes you get too used to what, what you're looking at and it uh, you start to, to to not pay attention to, to mistakes or certain lost details that's a good one man I, I it's it's an old trick but I never use it and um, it's probably one of the best and easiest ways to get a different perspective like we were talking about you know early earlier um, you know trying to see your your art from a different perspective and uh, going to going to take a break coming back the Absolutely. next day and you're going to be a different artist than you were the day before so you're going to have a new look at it the next day Absolutely. than you would but flipping it like this is a great way to kind of get out of the headspace you've been in forever and uh it's very easy to do <laughs> and it like kind of seems Absolutely. like a no-brainer but yeah. Uh, yeah i need to utilize this one more so for the animation like are you hand animating this? Did, did you rig it and then you hand animate the rig or yeah, yeah. everything, everything, everything like it's from scratch. Basically, I created a, a basic rig. I don't know if, you, if I could open here right now. An early stage of the rig. Sweet. So this was a low poly version with s simple shapes. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just checking. Okay. 
and I animated it. I used some like references in YouTube. I there were some short videos of dogs running and cheetahs, and mm -hmm. get a feeling of speed and agility and flexibility of the body. So it's all like a quick rig. It's mirrored, so there is no actual realism in the sense of the 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 in the one two three the four time. one two three four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. I, I did it only in the last couple of days, I believe. I kept the okay. mirror animation just so that I could get a, a very quick result as as soon as possible, you know? Oh man, I know nothing so, about animation. This is already like really impressive. <laughs> this would take me so yeah. long to do. Jeez. It's very different from, from modeling, actually. It took me some time to actually get used of, of wrapping my head around the techniques and understanding timing and weight that kind of yeah, stuff yeah for sure um, but once you get used it's pretty fun so we have about we have about what eight minutes left so we'll take it to the chat here oh, oh what up ej we got eye design up in here uh we'll take it to the chat if you guys have any questions for donald hit, him, hit me with an at ponisher i'll check this in a minute while donald continues through his versions here yeah, so I what is this? V12? Flipped V12 or something? or Yeah, flipped something, but I don't know. Oh, okay. V18? V18. <laughs> yeah. Basically, these are really close to the days of work. Like oh, every yeah. day I would, I would do a, a quick render. I render in Eevee, which is pretty fast. It's like what it's supposed to be the real time render engine of Blender. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't take that much to get a daily render that you can look in your free time and try to pick details where to add and where to remove stuff that's a cool idea i like that doing a render each day and seeing and it's a good kind a of good map of the evolves. progress too yeah 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 so i started adding more details the breeze i simulated this in, still in blender but on another file project to keep things light yes and re-imported it in, in the main file as an alambic Yes. So, and it started adding layers of simulation from Embergen. Oh, it's starting to look, starting to come together here. Yeah. Yep. More and more as an explosion. Still, the trails of the of the rockets here are, are like 3D meshes with weird textures. So I added the final simulations in the last couple of days, I believe. So, you're do this was the first time you used Embergen. This is the second time. The first time I used it on, I believe, one year and a half ago. Yeah. And then I paused and I had to relearn a few things. You know, you, you get a subscription and you play around, you use the presets because you always yeah. want to start with something quick and you play around with the presets and tweak them and try to get something pleasant. Mm. But there's a lot of like fake imagery here or effects manual effects on the smoke like for example the shadow i don't know if if, it, if it's visible the smoke trail here yeah the shadow is hand painted it's so the oh. scene the smokes are only like plates they're not really in the scene in the sense that I see. they do not get the lighting yes so i had to fake that and have another effect in a later render i'm opening the final render because there isn't much of a change here. Oh man, it's so good. So even the fire here gets brighter because of the explosion, the smoke, sorry. Yeah, yeah, gets yeah. brighter. That was all like, I rendered the smoke twice with different lights and I switched transition cool, smoothly dude. between them to, to give the effect of actually being some kind of a lighting effect. I love it. I love it. Ah, so Oops. good. So, so much detail. Let's see what the chat has. Uh, they want to know. They want to know how old you are for some reason. So, <laughs> no, worries. I'm 31. 30. I'm 31. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I had an idea. Um, uh, Felipe says, "How did you approach the modeling for the main character for the for this robot?" So, I, I've been practicing for like a few years. Like in the background, I never publish robots, but I constantly am trying to to learn how to design them and like i'm constantly practicing and the idea was very simple here i i initially wanted to get a certain silhouette with certain feeling of, of yeah. strength and speed 
so I got the silhouette first and only later I decided to use the kit bashing technique with my own models to, to fill in the gaps to give it a feeling of complexity yeah so wow okay this was do something simple first and then you add more and more without breaking the initial idea that's a great man you got your workflow down that's awesome um another question here was how often you practice 3d daily like i'm I, all my almost all my free time is spent experimenting with stuff that i'm not good at yeah yeah so like after i put a few hours of work on my like professional projects i go and try some new stuff in blender that's amazing so man. it's daily always practicing that's great that's good advice um let's see any other questions we got three more minutes okay we got time for some questions uh yeah the transformation how 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 difficult was it to do that transformation there was it pretty straightforward or what so the idea with the transformation i initially it was going to be even more animal looking uh, the wings were going to were supposed to be like uh, birds wings but yeah. later that was a bit too tough to rig and actually get the shape right so i simplified it and uh, of course it's not perfect but the main point was to make it to make the, the creature robot look like as if it was trying to become aerodynamic so yeah i decided to fold the, the hands and the feet and also added some shapes on top to make it look curved like it could actually pierce the air easily that was like the main idea yeah and you know push a piece a little bit more on the left a little bit higher so that it can fit you know just try to mesh them together without breaking anything oh that's beautiful it's a very seamless transition and it's not like it's not like you're going from a you know from like a it doesn't Completely feel like different. a transformers transformation it yeah, feels yeah, yeah, different yeah. you know i try um, to stay away from from like those kind of existing ips yeah to have my own thing you know and it feels that way that's good um let's see uh, was it one render, one final render, or did you have like pieces? Did you like volumet volumetrics separate and then combine so, it together in post? Almost everything is one render. The only thing uh, that I had to render on a different layer were the smoke trails for the rockets. Yes. Because like Blender, with this real time render engine that I use, uh, uses layers. So what happens if you expand the rendering of the volumetrics a bit too far, you get to see a certain flickering. So mm, okay. to save time, I rendered them separately with a higher resolution and then composed that on top. I see. That's smart. Very smart. Um, last question. People are wondering, uh, I have your Instagram in the description here. I have all the artists, yeah. for anyone wondering, I have all the artists' info in the description. But they're wondering if you specifically have an art station page or is Instagram the best place? Well, I actually have it all like YouTube. Instagram, I, in Instagram, I put more uh, like whip or work in progress, progress stuff. Uh -huh. But on ArtStation, I have more detailed and behind the scenes and some sketches and ideas like how how I approach certain elements Can and you, also a YouTube yeah. channel. Oh, man, you got it all. OK, yeah, please um, type it here in our in our group chat right here. And then I'll copy paste okay. that into the okay. into the live okay. chat. Um, and uh, or you know what? Just type it into the live chat. People will get it okay. if you type it into the live chat once we once we head out here. Um, that way okay, people can follow sure. you. And I'll be sure to add it to um, the description as well. But Donald, man, thank you so much. We we were blown away by your art. Myself, Ren, uh, Peter, Thanks, and, and the captain. So um, Such a pleasure. Yeah, dude. Yeah, killing it, man. Please continue uh, your work. I know you will. You know, you're very dedicated and very passionate. So I cannot wait to see more from you and maybe we'll work together in the future who knows man like really really cool stuff super excited thank yeah. you man. thank you absolutely absolutely all right we'll catch you soon man peace Bye, out man. thank you so Bye. much yeah oh boy hello oh wait were we back to donald hold on what's happening soto <laughs> oh man 
What's up? How do we pronounce your name here? So, okay, what what's the name you got on the screen? Limonas. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. Li Limonas. Li li is it li Limonas or Limonas? The second one was uh, pretty fun. Limonas? Yes, sir. I know okay. I know. I have many names, but uh, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one Sweet. Yeah, yeah dude, you, can, uh, you can call me Lee, you know, uh, Lee, LP, whatever you want, sir. Here you go. Sweet, yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome, Lee Limonis. Welcome, um, dude. Your your art, I gotta say, is probably the most unique out of all the renders that I saw. Um, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't know what, I don't know where you're hanging out to put this <laughs> together. Like, this is crazy, man. Wow, what a piece of art. Congratulations. I really appreciate it. I mean, that was my goal. So I guess I achieved it. <laughs> a bit of a confusion, a bit of a sort of making it nice and jelly-like, but mostly yeah, confusion yeah. for the viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where where are you from? Uh, so I'm based in the UK, but you know, I'm I'm Lithuanian. That's where I'm born, but I live in the UK now. Yeah. Sweet. And how long have you been working in 3D? Uh, pa, pa, pa. let me look at my. <laughs> I'd say I'd say a bit over over ten years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it shows, man. Um, I had I had quite a journey. I, I started with Cinema 4D, uh, and then professionally I did Maya for three or four years, and then I got back into Cinema 4D after it became kind of hot stuff again. So here yeah, I am. yeah. Yeah, I had a similar similar experience. I started in R10, actually, and then switched to 3ds max for six years and maya for like three months and then uh back to c4d when it when it got hot again yeah exactly exactly <laughs> nice nice that's right um, um I'm, I'm hoping to move on to blender of course you know, out there, but... yeah no it's it's all it's all journey you know whatever gets you inspired yeah. so it doesn't really matter what program you're using it's just the art that comes that's from fine. it i think that's yeah right. we i think we all know that at this point but um <laughs> yeah I feel like I say that all the time. Uh, I see the chats always like uh, Blender Nation and all this, and it's like I mean, you guys don't really do that, I, but I th I think uh, go go you know go Blender Nation. Why not? You know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Whatever <laughs> I, whatever makes you yeah. happy. Honestly, if even if you make three D in like Microsoft Paint, I support that. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know where people are out on their journey and what what they need to to do to make their best art. It could you know it's so subjective and um it doesn't make sense to like shame anybody for using a certain software it just feels very <laughs> strange like you gotta get the dewalt tools you know like you gotta <laughs> it's like who cares there it's yeah. a it's a drill you know um it's all about a milwaukee man milwaukee. <laughs> but i'm a dewalt guy for right. sure i'm not gonna lie oh um <laughs> that's funny uh yeah what can we talk about yeah yeah so you said you started out like how did you get started um you said you've been in for 10 years what what was the thing that like was like i'm gonna do 3d right um so early days it was photoshop i was making giant giant gifs like cool. uh, full hd gifs and <laughs> at some point i um let's see i was i was kind of introduced to editing i think sony vegas at a time yeah uh and then after Effects and Premiere and Adobe stuff, and then Maya, <laughs> and then eventually Cinema 4D again, and here here I am. Yeah. Sweet. So it's just a creative outlet for you then. Um, that's cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Let, let's get into this art, man. Where do you even begin with this thing? Cool. Uh, should should I pop over to my um my scene? Sweet. Yeah. Whatever you got. Okay. So I know, I know some people. <laughs> so I know some people were, were thinking, um, how do they simulate this? And there's there's pretty much no simulation this at all. Um, Great. In fact, yeah. most of the stuff, and this is the top thing some like uh, you know actual like, simulation guys like TDs will tell you: if you can avoid simulation, then don't simulate. Oh, um, okay. And that's that's always my go-to. So actually, all I got is, um, if you can see here, uh, I've got three displaces with some good old uh, kind of, kind of oops, yeah okay 
is my little a vertex maps. Yes, yes, so okay. You can, you can imagine. I got one displacer here that does the base base waves, and all it is is a noise. Oh yeah. In a, just just going in a x oh, x direction, wow. I think. Yeah. Okay. That's so smart. Oh. And dude. it's you know it's pretty pretty speedy as well, so it kind of helps. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, cheat, cheat it, and from from the very start, I had a goal of having as many flaps as I can. Yeah. And so I got my main flaps, I got some side flaps, got some top <laughs> flaps, and I got little uh, back flaps, let's say. Well, <laughs> little butt cheek flaps. And I, I like it. <laughs> and they, they all they all got their own little displacements, you know, each each unique strength, and and that's all all that. That's does so it, you cool. Know? That's so cool. Did so you simple. like? utilize this technique is this like your your um biggest like culmination of this technique or were you were you doing this in like other projects in a small way or uh yeah 100 percent. okay um well w one thing that happens all the time is you do a simulation and then you're you're thinking oh i'm gonna have to let, let's update it let's do a tweak and it never works out because simulation yeah. is fickle it's very fickle and yeah unbreakable. Yeah, and so I've, over time I've learned to simplify as much as I can. And this place is just such a beautiful tool; uh, it just does it. Uh, oh, that's a great. So, that's a great so, yeah. technique. That's a good takeaway Sim simplify. technique. Simplify. What about um, the um? What about the jugs? The the, the little uh, like the, the good, good old jugs. The sacks. Right, yes. Let's see. Let's see my sacks. I have baked them here quite a lot. Bake bake everything. Bake everything. Uh, just a little. Okay. Little. Yeah. So I've done. Oh, it looks like there's a jiggle, but there's also a cloth. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not the best prepared. But no, uh, no, no, this so is great. The, they, they, they are cloth because um, I was actually. I did use this as an opportunity to learn cinema's new, uh, you know, cloth uh, tools and stuff, which I was. It's pretty cool. Through. Yeah, it's cool. Yes, oh, there's also some extra sacks in that one. Well. Um, so, so it is cloth, but very, very rigid. Uh, basically, it's just mm. fully. Oh, actually, this is Cinema 25. Oh, I made this in 2023. Um, so basically, you know the mix animation uh, option that you get in cloth, uh, which basically pretty much follows the shape with some dynamics happening on top. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's sort of that's what I've done for the sacks. Um, so yeah. How do you get them to connect? Like how how uh, are they connected? Connect. So I think the way they work actually. Um, again, I. Oh, there they are. Let me just find which sack. Oh, that's the sack. Good. So this little little tasty sack over here. Um, basically, another vertex map. Another fantastic tool. Yeah. Uh, what it does is um, this the the red area. So it's, it comes in inverted. The red area is a hundred percent to follow the animation, which is staying with the body. Oh. And then everything further down is slightly eases off and gets yeah. a bit more wind and turbulence happening. Um, Ah, oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. So, so, so really, on the rig, if I jiggle this rig a little bit, uh, what you notice is that this is how close they stay with the rig. I see. Yes. You know, um, and then from there, a bit, um, a bit of cloth happening on top. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um. um what else? Stash, we got the my stash. yeah. <laughs> yes. That's this. Uh, the the stash is fully. Uh, let me find my little. So I've actually, I've actually made two versions of the rig. Uh, so my little stash is actually a full, a full soft body cloth simulation. As we can see, as we can see here, that they, they do quite a nice sort of well affected by the wind and as the mouth opens, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so they are they are fully, fully uh, soft soft body slash cloth. With a similar technique as the sax, uh, fully follow here and then loose, loose yeah. stuff as it goes along. And they are baked uh, down, yeah. you said, right? Always, always baked down. Yeah, they, they got to be out here somewhere. Uh, for, for this, for this example, I got it baked. We can see it's intersecting. Um, yeah. That's hard to tell, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, w what about yeah. the? <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> I want to get into references in a minute here, but let's figure. Let's let's finish up the like dynamic stuff. So you, you have the little antennas on top. You have the the little um, like car wash stuff on the bottom, and then you have the seaweed on the back. So those three. 
Yes, so seaweed, again, exactly as the body. Yes. Um, it's Instead, actually, of a displacer, I went an even lighter way because I didn't optimize my jump sheet too well. If you look at them, they're quite heavy. Okay, yeah. Uh, so basically, I got to that. Okay, they, they are baked, but basically the tail flaps uh, use just a plane. So plane in a deformer mode. Um, and this is this is the lightest way possible in cinema to like deform stuff. You mean uh, like they're they're just, like, parent like they're parented to, uh, like are you talking about like the FFD thing where it's like a low poly they follow the low poly uh, reference? Uh, nope. This this heavy this heavy thing is deformed as you see there. Jeez. Yeah, so it's, so it's definitely a, ch a chungus in in that. But but basically, my little uh, plane, because all, all they do is move points up. Uh, you know, it's it's very simple. It doesn't take, look at normals or anything really. Um, it's just these fields going through them, and it looks it kind of does it does the job. Oh, you're talking yeah. fields and a, I see, I see, I see. Look, okay, I, that's like so, so. Without the fields, all it does. This effector simply takes all the points and moves them up and back a little bit. I see. Yeah. And the fields are like, that's where you're getting the waves from. That's right. In mm -hmm. different chunks of it happening at different times. And the right. is the vertex like, map uh, keeping it locked down? Like the, uh, the nope, connecting point? Actually, uh, nope. Uh, what you'll see here, if you look at my fields. Yeah. Uh, what, what the these the two orange boxes. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so okay, so this, so this guy actually like limits the effects of the plane yes. to just go just after the points where it's attached. Yeah, <laughs> they're very simple. Uh, the quickest method I could find without you know retoping these even more and keeping the maps. That's very smart. Um, it, Amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of baking. All right, what about the uh, <laughs> the car wash down there? The car wash. Oh, so this guy. Uses my my absolute favorite thing in cinema, which is a spline deformer, and everyone uses it always, forever. Because um, so basically, it's uh, uh, a load of hair. Um, currently, it's got dynamic stuff. Uh, but let's see. If yeah. Let's see what happens. It's gonna do some really wacky stuff. Basically, again, you put on a little bit of wind, and it kind of goes back. It looks like it's moving forward, and it also follows the rig really well. Looks like. Whoa. Uh, pa, pa, pa. And then all you do with this with this hair, which is really like, take take a capsule, uh huh, uh, put a spine deform on it, drag your hair in there, and uh, bam, bish bash bosh, as they say, you know. And it's uh, being like, it. the movement is coming from what? Uh, from from the from the hair. It's just a uh, really basic oh, it's, hair. You're using hair, grown. okay. <laughs> Yeah, hair is another really wonderful tool. Um, you know, you just put on a bit of wind, blow it that way, and it looks like it's uh, so in the mm. You're very well rounded in C4D. Like you're hitting all these all these things that I rarely, <laughs> never, I never use. This is I, really I, cool. I, I, it just uses a wacky way. Uh, be creative, you know. Be creative how you use it. Yeah. Um, and in fact, th these little guys. These are they're FK uh, or IK, you know. So these are these are IK. Mm -hmm. So these are not these are not at all simulated. All I have is uh, if you know cappuccino is called yeah cappuccino. Uh, I just did this. <laughs> yeah, and that was that. Yeah. Oh, so you live recorded and, that movement? Yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah. And, and you're doing right. that with um, with how? Uh, so. If you if you know uh, regular regular old uh, sorry I'll solo that I don't know how much how we're doing on time but it's really up to you we uh, have fifteen it's regular, minutes cool. it's a regular it's a regular sort of chain of joints yes in an IK and you got one controller mm -hmm. and uh, with a simple bind it just attaches to my little uh, actual geo and you can do do your thing. And then no, but you said you were live. You were live animating it though. Like you hit play and you move that uh, around, yeah. or yes, you sorry, just put noise that. on it. No, no, I did. I did animate it. I did animate it by okay. hand. Um, so I disabled all the animation and everything, and all I did 
it was press cappuccino, which he recalls in real time, and all of it was this, this exact oh, motion. Okay, that's what cappuccino is. Cap okay, that's cool. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's just it's yeah, it records your sort of uh, mouse movements. Yeah, that's great. Then, uh, it's really it's really good for this like random motion. Um, you know, I tried the dynamics of this, but it wasn't working. And instead of just trying to get it right, I just went like this, and that was that was it. That's perfect, dude. So like, wow, this but, is yeah. like a wonderful presentation. <laughs> this is so good. Uh, okay, so oh, uh, yes. I have questions on the idea. How the heck? Did you come up with this like concept? Ah, ba, ba, ba. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Uh, let me go to the pure ref. Um, so I uh, for for this for this one project I went slightly different than I normally would, which is like quite a lot of planning. I kind of went um, just I I had I had like a few. A few sort of to do. So I knew I knew I wanted to do a jiggly creature that's yeah. quite like pleasant, a bit cute, uh, not uh, not too not too gross. Yeah. Uh, a bit a bit a bit wet and lively. <laughs> Definitely yes. a lot of sex. Uh, and then from there, it kind of just evolved. Um, so if you look over here, I do mostly have horror references. Um, but, uh, one of my favorite ones was these sort of crab creatures. Uh, so initially, I was going to have quite like BD, uh, freaky eyes. This guy, the dream. Whoa. Uh, yes. Um, and so, so my my first thing to do was go on art station station and type in uh, creature with sex. <laughs> uh, and there was there was actually I think this this is the closest reference I could find. This this guy is definitely uh, definitely Whoa. I really enjoyed. Yes. That's great. Uh, That's great, man. And, it's just a tastiness, isn't it? And it's it's wet, it's lively, it's got some fuzz on it. Yeah. Great. That's the closest um, <laughs> I've come to wanting to eat a bug is is right now, looking at that image. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, so so initially, I was going to have like these sort of antennas with some ions in them. Mm -hmm. Eyes, sorry. A bit like a crustacean, I guess. Um, but after a bit of time, I've... I've realized that I want to do something like this. Yeah, yeah. And Can't go wrong. Can't That's go great. Wrong. Cats, internet likes cats. I like cats. Um, and that cat was always hungry. And uh, she was always there. I was there supporting me, you know. Uh, That's perfect. And, uh, perfect indeed. Uh, yeah. So, lots of eye references from there. And That's I kind of cool. generally I, I, I build this up as I go. So it might have started out with with uh, one of these like sacky creatures, and then I kind of build up as I go, and I create a li little new section of just eyes, because I knew the eyes are going to be quite big and many pixels in the frame, basically. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time uh, looking at them. Uh, so yeah, get your refs, very good. Um, some environments. Um, I would I would say these are. These are quite AI inspired. That's one thing AI does quite well, in my opinion, is these. Yeah, concept art stuff. Yeah, these interestingly, these weren't these weren't made by me, by the way. These are some of our artists, but it's you know the look. You kind of know the look of uh, Mid Journey the early days, mm -hmm. and that's kind of it. <laughs> and so, so it was. And, very nice. Uh, yeah, kitty cats. And here's my very short to-do list. Um, I knew I knew I wanted some basic things uh, uh, of character interacting with the environment. You know, for example, hitting something or like dodging something. Yeah. Um, just for just for better integration. Um, and the that can be seen actually early on in the video when it flies through this field of uh, jiggly uh, jiggly tubes. Um, that's kind of I was kind of it at the start, and then I evolved into having a purpose, which is chasing my little uh, glowy little snacks, lobby creatures. Yes, sure. The plumbuses. I I know they are essentially plumbuses. <laughs> a lot of a lot of Rick and Morty went into this. Um, how do you how do you do the eye? Like what? Yeah, is Ooh, that I After have, Effects or something? One. So that. That's a lot of comping, uh, but let me go. Let me go over the eye model. Okay, so 
here's my little animal, which is it, you actually don't see this too much, but it does have um Whoa. very early on in the video, it has this protective like a layer open up. Yes, I see that, yep. It's kind of you know, I know redundant, I kind of spent time <laughs> for it to be visible for only five frames or so. Uh but yeah, here's uh, here's the eye. All it has is a blend shape. That goes kazoink. Yeah. Whoa. Kind of. Um, and one thing that not many artists do is actually sculpt and bake stuff in cinema. So let me just take a look. Okay, I've got my A bake time options. Because um, it's actually it's surprisingly good at. Um... No, it's not, it's not going to do a great job. But. Um... It's not. It's not quite showing it. Uh, basically, uh, you can you can do really high detail sculpts. Let's say three million polys, and then yeah. bake it all into a mesh as like this. You know, it's quite usable, and uh, all, all the maps kind of remain there, which is really a, a lot of fun. I do it all the time without without Dang. ever going to ZBrush. Yeah, I I do recommend it. Uh, oh, the, Man, my whole you, you're like maxing done. out this program. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, I do it to the limit. When they add uh, editing and compositing, then I'm definitely, I'm definitely sticking with it. But at yeah. the moment, I have that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, it's so was there simple. was there much compositing uh, in editing? Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, so actually, one other thing I utilized that you don't see too often is the old UV pass. Oh, there you go, material UV. Okay, so you're isolating each material as it comes out as its own color. Yes, and I can I can show this guy to you. Uh, Whoa! So, so that's what it looks like when you. That's your raw render. This is my raw render. Whoa! But I think this is <laughs> it's pretty close. And, uh, it's it's got the um, because uh, um, I'm working in the uh, what do we call it aces. Uh, it, yes. does, it does have the color color conversion applied in this PNG. Basically, once you restack your so if I just try it, once you restack your EXR, so as you know, layer the EXR, uh -huh. uh, you get something like a bit like a log. So hey, but that's more more like it. And then and then you got to convert it back to that using these funky little uh, open bits. color um, IO stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, <laughs> but I think I think uh, a new After Effects uh, solves that. Let's see. So all of your atmosphere and water, that underwater look, is coming from After Effects. Uh, yes. Also, another thing, fun fact. It's it's supposed to be more of a zero gravity situation. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It it's not necessarily I water. I, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, because I did look at some reference of underwater stuff, and actually, there's there's no specular underwater. For us. Fun fact, it doesn't yeah, really need that specular. <laughs> oh, this, this, oh yeah. Uh, uh, so basically, yes, my eyes are post. Uh, wow. The way the way this thing works is, I have using <laughs> dude. I can action hear your laptop. I can hear your computer revving up right now. Is that your computer fan? I hear. <laughs> That's my laptop. Yeah, it's yeah. Just working hard. <laughs> uh, yes. So, so basically, I've made this little comparoni here. Let me yeah, yeah. table. Basically, this is this is what happens. <laughs> oh, cool! So it's just like a bunch of like colored uh, action, like action dust essentials, man. Yes. Yeah, the best. The best, absolutely. And I've got some time remap and a little. Like a lens thing. I didn't actually have to do this, but basically, afterwards it goes on uh, onto this. Let me disable that. Dude, you need to tour the looks... world with this workflow, man. This is ridiculous. So um... this is a this is a UV map, and what it lets, yes. me, lets me do, as you know, is stack any texture back on top. Um, and so so I did. Um, let me just come back a little bit. There you go. So first of all, you mat it out and mm -hmm. plug in that wrap stuff around. Uh, and then boink, there it is. How does it track on? Is it, is um, it track? Well, 
this is this is the magic of these maps uh i believe the the way they work is if you look at green this is coordinate something and red is coordinate something else and it knows uh -huh. to take whatever you give it and wrap it on these corners it's kind of magic i can't really explain it but i know how it works it just what tracks it automatically uh yes yes yeah, so what the heck you got you got to look into these so if you look everything gets this applied yeah um it gets it but obviously yeah. because my map uh was made for the eyes it doesn't look good on anything else but you can put text or anything you want on there so if i lock this for a moment i had a little reference guy for my centering well it's not there anymore it's that guy oh, so you, you put a so, yeah yeah wow yeah so you can put anything you want in post and of course if you have your full render passes you can put it under reflections and specular so it sits perfectly back in dude this is in insane yeah man comp 100 uh and i can also show my depth stuff actually uh, i hope it's not broken What's going on? okay it's loading <laughs> there it is okay so this is i think this might be the final comp okay let me just check. Okay, yes. Uh, so this looks looks pretty good. Pretty good to what I expect it to look like. And it's a lot of depth passes. Mm -hmm. Doing doing a lot of it. Wow. Um, and also I have... So one other thing I forgot to mention, actually. Out of cinema, I would export a camera and a load of nulls. Yes. A load of... A heck of a load of nulls. Uh, and then basically you just put your snow cards in here and they just kind of do their thing yeah oh um, that's great because yeah I, I know i know blender does this really well just for free in viewport and whatnot um uh redshift is not that good at handling <laughs> sort of semi-transparent object like that mm -hmm. yeah so i keep it for post dude that that's uh, ridiculous that uh that that is actually okay. absolutely absurd. I feel like we could do this for another thirty minutes easily. Um, <laughs> okay, that's basically yeah. our time. Yeah. I mean, we got like two more minutes. I I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm blown I'm away. Some questions. Uh, I appreciate it. One one thing that's very hard to learn is when to stop the CG and go. I got to render and do the rest in post. Post post. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, you're, you know, do you still have trouble with that it being, you know, this far uh, in your I, career? I, I, de I definitely do. It's kind of surprising. Um, you know, I get it. I get it sort of close, but I gotta trust myself that I can, you know, I can take this kind of like a rough background and turn it into something quite like nice in post. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you can definitely not trust yourself, and then. Well, it's just uh, smart. Yeah. I think it's really smart because you're probably helping yourself with render times and you're probably giving yourself the most. <laughs> I love it. You're probably giving yourself the most uh, flexibility uh, in post. It's just you got a really smart workflow. I'm blown away by this workflow and, and your your knowledge of all the different aspects of both C40 and After Effects. That is, you're on another level here, man. <laughs> I do. I do appreciate it. Yeah, um, uh, guys, we have like a yeah, minute yeah. left. If you have, I mean, we got time for like one question. Um, go, go, go. Let's see. Don't get, don't get me started on my uh, little creature setup. They are also simulation free. Oh wow! My little Columbuses. That's, that's, that's right. Great. No Sims. No Sims over here. <laughs> that's so good, man. I'm blown away. Seriously, I, I, I think. Guys, I think that's time. I think we need to move on. But, uh, geez, man, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, I'm gonna go back and watch that, and I'm, I'm gonna be in contact for sure. <laughs> man, that, that is, that is incredible. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. What are you gonna do with this afterwards? Like, are you gonna do more stuff in this style, or are you just moving on? Uh, I would, I would love to. I would love to. I've, got, I've got many ideas, but not that much time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so fair. I'll just have to see. Just have to see where it goes. But I uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. All right. Cool. Uh, let me see. Li Liminus? Liminus? 
That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. We'll see you soon, all right? Thank you for your time, man. Congratulations. Peace out, man. Peace. Hey. <sighs> Hi, Clinton. Do you hear What's me? Up? I do, I do. Yes, do you hear me? Yeah, awesome. Yes, perfectly. Yes, man. Oh, so man, happy to be did... here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Did you catch that last uh that last chat? with lee or yeah uh, that was crazy yeah man. i i was watching all of them that's oh. great great stuff yeah absolutely man um so you you come from rio de janeiro all the way from brazil yeah yeah exactly uh actually i live in a closed city called niterói okay it is very very close to rio de janeiro but i usually say rio de janeiro because everyone knows everybody knows Rio. yeah yeah for sure um that's cool, man. So we're yeah, we're flying you out uh, to Colorado, new Camp Mograph yeah. later this year. That's gonna be sweet. Can't, can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be can't awesome, wait, man. Congrats, congrats on first place. Thank um, you. Yeah, your thank art you very much. is incredible. Like you, you had actually a really close version of this scene within week one or two. I'd say two. Is that right? Or uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, not that close. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, things ran really smooth, uh, more than I anticipated, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I have a, a, a very advanced uh, st um, step in week two. Uh, the week three was basically to create the chaser bug yeah. on, on the back and make extra uh, set dressing and color grading stuff. Okay, got you, got you. I mean, you had, I guess what I mean by you got pretty far in the beginning was you had this guy animated like this pretty yeah. soon. Um, I'm blown away at every, everything um, involving this one. The lighting, the idea, the animation, the design of the characters, the color, the render quality, um, even the camera shake, the like everything is perfect. Um, where... Uh, where do you start with something like this? Like, you know, where's your uh, mind I, at? I was, where, where, where are you getting these ideas from, first off? Uh, I was lucky uh, because I, I got aware of this challenge on the day one. Yeah. And uh, I watched your announcement on day one. And before finishing to watch the announcement, I already came with an idea. Uh, awesome. The first thing I thought... <laughs> The first thing I thought, uh, well, uh, mechanical insects are cool. So how do I work with this? And then I remembered, uh, 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 I remember a movie that I loved when I was a kid called uh, Kids I Shrank. Sorry, uh, Honey I Shrank the Kids. Yes. Uh huh. Rick Moranis. Yeah. yeah. And there, yeah, there was a scene that the kids uh, was uh, riding a giant ant to cross the garden. So I, I kept that in my mind. And funny thing is, uh, I didn't took reference for the movie. I just rem I just kept in my mind and tried to work on it. Yeah, okay, okay. So you didn't go back to it and try and like copy it or anything. You just remember yeah, it. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. That's cool. So you didn't, I, I like that because, you know, your idea of it might be different than the actual, you know, the actual movie. You know, it might have shifted in your mind, and it might be it might be cooler in your mind actually. Um, yeah, uh, so it's I, smart I of you to, to like not go back and just remember. Yeah, and actually, uh, I did this uh, for the whole process. Uh, of course, I use references. I, I took a bunch of references. Uh, actually, I took the first weekend just thinking about it and taking reference from it. But I didn't want to go too crazy with too much reference and options, so I. I want to make something fresh from my mind as well. And this was a very good exercise. And um, I did this for all another previous work as well. I, I took some previous work as reference, but I didn't check the reference itself. I just kept in my mind and trying to make a new thing, not copying it, but just having the working with the memory I have from this previous work. I like that a lot. That's, that's actually great because it is nice to have reference, but at the same time, we yes. can get locked too too locked in. You know, um, I've yeah, been talking definitely. about 
you know, uh, like the since the beginning of this year, I've really been doing a lot of focus on creativity and like where it comes from and all this. And um, one of one of the things I read, I mean, shout outs real quick, because this book is incredible. Uh, the Rick Rubin book right here. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Maybe you have oh. heard of it, but it's called The Creative Act. And uh, it it talks about how like it has a chapter on <clears throat> rules and how if you have too many rules at the beginning, um, too many barriers, then you really pigeonhole yourself into this. O only only one or two things can happen when you're within this. Like you have so many rules, but if you take away all the rules, all the labels, and you just give yourself as many options as possible, you can really find some cool stuff. So I've never heard of that. I've always known as references just being something I always go back to. I always go back to. But to hear you say that you gathered it at the beginning and you just studied it and internalized it and then you moved on that's all you need yeah and you can kind of break free from the reference in that sense but while still having an idea of it that's so cool yeah uh it is crucial having reference but uh, throughout the years working with this uh, you gather so much reference and a lot of them uh get stuck to your head and it is nice to visit it, that peace of mind and try to access over there and things start getting a little abstract and you can create new stuff from this yeah i love it i love it it's great um so you gathered some reference you internalized it what's your next move what do you do uh so uh i start blocking out uh i'm not a good drawer so i started make a simple blocking in blender uh oh, that's even yeah, cool i like that that's that's fun yeah. A very, very simple blocking, uh, nothing fancy. I wasn't worried with topology, nothing like that. Uh, just basic shapes. Yeah. Um, but I need to see if it works, of, of course, in the in the angle, camera angle. Yes. Uh, and that's great that you provide this uh, because it's, it is so helpful. Uh, because w when you first open a 3D software, uh, it is kind of overwhelming because you just see a blank screen. A, a, a blank viewport yeah there's nothing there and think oh anything can happen here and when you when you have a a, a template like this it, it is great it is a, a huge shortcut yeah uh, it, it's, it's kind of the opposite yeah. of what we we're just talking about where like there's too many th there's not enough rules we need one or two rules maybe like to yeah. get us you know limitations can be nice in a way and um it kind of sets the playing field just a bit so i see what you're saying yeah yeah definitely uh so uh, i made this very simple block out and uh linked to this um the vehicle in and out that you provided yeah and just let it go but watch this for a few days and then started moving forward with a more uh complex block out and uh one nice thing that i think about blender uh, is the use of grease pencil. So since since I'm not a drawer, uh, sometimes I go sketch on my blockout. Um, like, let me put the surface and set the offset. And just draw simple shapes here where I'm going to cut, make more details. Add oh, maybe wow, that's a, cool. a crazy eye over here. Uh, let's do a, a heart here, maybe some fancy face. <laughs> uh, and, and you can wor continue work on top of this. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's the first step. Uh, I started, I, I made, I go further with the blocking out. Uh, and here, uh, the, actually, this so is cool. the, the latest model. Um, well, uh, block out block out is the key since i i i can't sketch anything like that i i have um i, I can understand a little better what i'm doing with very simple shapes yeah and a lot of people uh keep asking oh man how, how do you how do mother complex stuff like this I, well you always have to start simple mm -hmm. simple shapes and start to cut it um then you add subdivision uh add extra loops to hold the, that edges to make it sharper and things start uh, and things start to flow yeah from this point 
and just starts to float. Uh, and in the middle of the process, I made a, a simple rig that is nothing very complex. Um, uh, a bunch of IKs bones. Mm -hmm. And I, I did this, this rig before finishing the model uh, because one thing that I, I like to do a lot of stuff. I like to model, I like to shading, I, I like to animate, uh, co uh, composite uh, lighting. Uh, and I wanted to do all at once. And yeah. I don't want to spend any time in, um, in something that won't be imported or will be unnoticed. Yeah. Uh, so a, a good work, a good way that works well for me is working all at once. So I start blocking it, make the rig, make the animation, continue modeling. And what I did here was, um, I did this, the, the rig of the, the character. And there is this point here that is, uh, that has a constraint that follows the surface of the floor. So oh, it cool, can continue, cool. it continue conforming on it. So yeah. I can continue animating. I don't, I, I wasn't worried of the realistic side of things. Um, I didn't want to make anything looks real. Uh, I like this stylish look. And so the legs doesn't follow the ground very well. Uh, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this bug slides like we were wondering. Crazy. We were wondering that. I think it was MDK. He was like uh, one of the moderators. He's like, I wonder if the legs actually, because he's very technical, right? No. And he's wondering if the legs match the ground. And I was like, I wonder too. So you're just you're just doing no, no, no. you're just doing this, and it just works because yeah, it does. So uh, yeah, I, I I did a loop. Uh, because uh, this is very forgiving because uh, I did a, a quick animation of each leg. Uh, this synchronize them so we make this cycle. Uh, let me turn off the constraints here because I I like to work on the world origin. So yeah. uh, adding this, cons I, I linked the whole rig in the in that point uh, with constraints, and I just turn off, uh, uh, turn to. Uh, rest position and them. Uh, it is very the, the the origin of the the scene and the rest position, so I can continue modeling in this stage. Uh, Wait, so you're saying and, you animated the background? You animated the environment to go by as opposed to the character? Uh, no, uh, I, I turned this off. I keep turning this on and off so I can I go back to the world origin and can continue working on the model. But yeah. uh, the bug is is animated. I see. Try I see. turn this on again. I see. Oh, he's uh, he's out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So Yay! are you <laughs> are you uh looping the leg animation? Yeah. Okay. Uh, simple loop. A quick you can loop. See huh? here. Yeah. A very quick loop here. Uh, nothing fancy about it. And after having, uh, I just have the the body and the legs moving. And yeah. then I started working on the secondary movements and anticipations. Sorry, anticipations. Yes. Uh, like moving the, the wings, uh, moving the second body, like this here, uh, moving the antennas. I keep adding stuff. And when I get tired of animating, I go back to modeling, do a new, uh, more details, go back to the camera if it's working. And this went through all the the process that's great so you get tired of one aspect you move on to another yeah. one that you're excited for yeah I, yeah i like to vary the vary in the production because one thing the the major thing uh that my, my first thought uh, before joining this this challenge was i don't want to get stressed i want to have fun i don't i don't want to burn out doing this yeah and yeah and and i took it really serious uh, your suggestion in one video uh don't rush to start don't rush to finish and oh, yeah. i kept this in my <laughs> mind for the whole yeah i think I that was ronan for the whole uh, it was i think it was one of the moderators when they were doing the rules they they added that bit and i thought that was like really good really good advice so i can't take credit for that but i agree with it wholeheartedly <laughs> um yeah yeah, it, yeah it, that's it, good 
it is so easy uh, for you to get overwhelmed with the amount of work and you trying to go to ambitious paths that you you just realize that you went into a production trap just later on so i i really wanted to avoid this how did you the avoid most it? possible uh plain simple uh start simple uh i i didn't think about the second bug before the second week so i thought well i will do this bug i'll do this environment i will make him running through this environment and see how it goes um if i have enough time i i will try to figure out the second bug yeah and uh i kept so no working pressure. on the mod yeah no pressure at all uh i wasn't pressuring myself in in of course uh the the amount of time i had to do this uh was very helpful because i i i i could start it since the beginning um and yeah uh i think that for example uh in the model uh i almost all the time was looking at the camera when I was modeling. And for example, I have this, I, I started thinking in some smaller engines for each pair of legs. And I just started to think, well, maybe if I put some heat scenes over there, some boat stuff like that and stop it. Hell no, it doesn't be seen. It, it won't notice <laughs> at all. So yeah, yeah, no worries. I just put in the camera, make it look the, oh man, just crash. Awesome. <laughs> all good, all good. Okay, no problem. Is that Windows Render. 11? Yeah. How do you like it? But uh, uh, it is nice. It is good. Actually, I was working in Windows 10 yeah. uh, when I was doing this challenge and was crashing a lot. So, well, maybe I will give Windows 11 a try. You updated Windows versions crashing. halfway through this project? No, no. I, I finished first. <laughs> oh. I finished first. I was like, dude, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So you I like it though? First. You like it? I'm skeptical, but I, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I tried before, uh, right in the beginning. Uh, wasn't very good. Now I think it feels the same. Okay. It is very stable. Cool. And yeah, uh, now, now it goes. Uh, actually, I, I also uh, updated the latest, latest version of Blender, but uh, I'm using the, the same one I used in the, the challenge. Mm, I see. Uh, so like you see it is all occluded with shadows so you won't see much details in here yeah, yeah. and actually uh the whole <clears throat> texture stuff uh i didn't make a huge amount of work detailing small pieces and stuff like that uh, I, I i did a generic texture with procedural uh i don't even uv this model Nice, man. It looks beautiful. It's very like, it's just metal, right? And yeah. some imperfections. Maybe. Yeah, it works. It works. Uh, it definitely would, looks better if I have uh, spent more time on it. Maybe uh, going to Substance Painter. But, well, uh, these geometries are dense. So uh, UVing this is kind of a headache. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't UV anything. I don't even, <laughs> I barely know how. So I, yeah. Oh, well, it, it is a good solution not UV. Uh, you, you can um, you can solve a lot of stuff not UV. Uh, actually, I think it is only for a very specific stuff that uh, uh, nowadays I UV something. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. So you have you have your animation, you have your basic texture. You know, wh where does where do you find yourself now? Week and a half, two weeks. Uh, well, uh, I kind of finished the 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 bug model and the the pilot environments in two weeks cool um of course i kept refining this later uh the second bug um uh, i model him in about two days and work on the animation maybe in four days uh, I, I it took three weeks total to finish the, the animation yeah. uh but i still have two weeks ahead of me uh before the deadline so I will keep it a rest, stay cool, don't watch this animation at least for one day or two, and then go back. And I tweak something, change the contrast a little bit, change the colors a little bit in Da Vinci, uh, change the animation a little bit, something like that, but not nothing major. Uh, but the whole process took me three weeks total. That's great to be in a point where 
you could submit and so many people would submit you know we had people submitting as soon as the submission link was live two weeks after the announcement and uh-huh. uh, I, th- I think like to me it makes no sense you know like yeah I, you know I get I get it if you if you have to submit and you're gonna go on vacation or something sure or if it's just yeah. you know you had your time as fun and you're moving on and that's fine but if you have the extra time why not sit yeah. on it well, and, and make it better yeah. when you where you can yeah I, I just uh want I just wanted to avoid to deliver it uh, too late oh yeah two days before I think it is uh a little dangerous definitely uh, because uh yeah because i i i didn't i didn't participate before in this challenge so i don't know how it works maybe i don't know if it has any uh bandwidth i don't know yeah some yeah. technical issue that might have i don't know <laughs> but uh i kept keep, uh, kept safe but one other thing is if you kept if, if you keep this work and don't deliver it, uh, you always find something new to work on. So there was a there is a time that you have to know how to stop and just send the work and I'm done. Because if I kept it, uh, I, I sent the work one week before and I knew if I didn't do this, I would drag this until the very end, try to change some stuff and do some crazy thing and start getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah, because at a certain point, you're tweaking things just to tweak things because you can and it's not necessary yeah. and uh, it maybe gets worse yeah. at a certain point. And I think it's important to be aware of that um, and good on you for for delivering it when you did um, with a week left because, I mean, hey, that, that's a good that's a good reason right there. If it's if you think it's done and yes, then it's done. Yeah, you know? uh, of course. Uh, well, it is a balance, right? Uh, from uh, everything is a balance. You you need to know how to stop, and because I, I think the you never finish a work, you just don't have more time to yeah to, for to, sure. to work more on it. So uh, I, I had some um, personal projects that took forever because I I constantly changing stuff and yeah oh no this, this not not this time. <laughs> That's smart, man. How, how long have you been working in 3D for? I work for 3D for quite some time. I work for 20 years. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a long time. Um, what got you interested in 3D? Well, uh, I got fascinated by uh, when I watched Toy Story and also Jurassic Park. There are very opposite medias. Uh, one very realistic and one more cartoonish, but uh, I, I like both. That's um, awesome. And started getting interested and uh, made uh, some courses. Of course, at the time, uh, that wasn't too many courses available. Uh, there wasn't YouTube yet, so mm-hmm. it's a, li- a little more difficult to gather information about softwares. But yeah, uh, I manage it. That's but awesome. my interest start from there. That's great. What are we looking at here? What is this? Yeah, this is the final scene. This is the final scene we've all together. Of course, I love the blazing in real time. But it is yeah, here. the sense of speed you have with the rocks in the ground and the motion blur whipping by is so nice. I love that. Yeah, it is nice to give uh, depth to the scene, right? Uh, things going really close to the camera and things going mm-hmm. far away. Uh, it is ni- nice to have this different. I hope that Blender doesn't crash, but I will. It's okay. Try it. If it does. <laughs> well, we'll um, we have about five more minutes here. We can ask the chat if you guys have Already. any questions. I know, right? It's cr- time flies, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, if you yeah. have any questions for Fabricio, do at Punisher. I'll see them, uh, and we'll ask him some questions here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here. Ah, oh, man, it looks so nice. So nice. Yeah, Blender's real time. It's Eevee. That's what it's called, the real time renderer. No, no, this is Cycles. Cycles. Uh, I was yeah. The Cycles is the path tracing. Um, yeah. The most demanding one, but I I managed to work on the a lot of optimization stuff on this on this scene. So it doesn't 
it, it is not too heavy to work okay with. What, what was your final render time do you know uh it took about seven hours that's not bad at all dude like my not renders bad. take 48 hours <laughs> that's <Whoa>. ridiculous <laughs> oh man um let's see all right well uh mdk he's asking what was the first 3d software that you ever used i use 3d studio not the max it is with 3d studio before the windows version it was 3d studio for the os dang this is the first one the first one i i uh, the, the first viewport i saw what was the second one i tried lightwave uh for a little time but um I think it was discontinued, but I, I jumped to 3ds Max yeah. right after, and yeah. kept kept with 3ds Max until yep. today. I use 3ds Max as well, but I really like Blender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 3ds Max was like the one back in the day. I remember. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got some other questions here. If you see any ones that you want to answer too, feel free. Um, let's see. Uh, what's your GPU? That's what Wondrous wants to know. Yeah, uh, well, when I finished this project, I was using RT RTX 3090, and now I, I have a 4090. I just upgraded. Yeah, nice. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, so, uh, we kind of got into this a little bit, but um, how do you keep yourself motivated through the project? Well, uh, you have to pick something you like to do. And for uh, when, when I do personal stuff, I usually try to do something different, uh, something that I, I don't know that much, that I like to, to, to study a little more. Uh, but the, my for my daily work, I usually stick with what I already have a good, a good knowledge on it. Uh, and and it, it is nice uh, when, when, when they keep, the idea comes uh i think it is a, a very straightforward you have to keep looking at references and uh try to figure out how how the the outcome will be when you finish this one and of course not not all the time it works but uh i i i don't i don't remember how many projects i dropped <laughs> yeah because i was too ambitious or something that i i just lost interest it's really, really fickle it and very important to yeah, <laughs> try yeah, and it find that right balance there. Um, yeah, definitely. Trial and error. Um, they're saying how you created decal the decals on the bug, but I don't see any decals. Are there decals on the bug? Uh, no, no, there is no decals. Uh, there are insert meshes. Uh, I use a program called, uh, sorry, the, the I don't call a uh, mesh machine. And let me open one here really quick it is really really good um let me see let's use a cylinder and uh subdivide it maybe this way and use this like here this plugs and do this oh i'm sorry i messed it up something but oh i get the idea that's uh, really powerful yeah, that is very useful. Let me see if it works on top of here. Yeah, and it inserts to the mesh. Oh, it is embedded to the mesh. Oh, dude, very nice. That mesh is, machine. That is great. Jeez, thank you for that. Yes. That's a nice nugget for everybody. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, those holes and stuff. All that stuff is tough. Um, yeah, all, all all these small details, these holes, uh, these uh, inserts here our mesh machine oh man a uh, huge That's time good. saver and and you also uh, can can make custom ones like uh this curve here and this triangle uh i model separated and then set using this add-on dang yeah because that, that'd be really hard to get right uh yeah like accurate topology would be tough there but that's super cool love that yeah um fabricio that that's that's all the time we got today man but um Awesome. Thank you so so much for for doing oh, this and for being you. patient. I know you were no you were problem. last here. <laughs> you had to wait for all the all the other ones here. But no, thank no you. Problem. 
Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. Thank you so much for choosing me as the first place. It's uh, really are on, an honor. Absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, congratulations again. I love your Thank mindset. You. Thank you very much. The workflow, and um, I'll see you in September for camp in Colorado. Yes, definitely. Yeah, man. I'll be there. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you play any music? Uh, no. Any instruments? <laughs> no. Okay. No, unfortunately, I would like to, but I. No. <laughs> All good. All I prefer good. to gonna, hear it. We're gonna have some good times, man. Some very good times. Okay. All right, Fabricio, have a good one. I'll catch you later, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Peace out. Bye. Man. Later. Bye. Ah, oh, man, so good. So good. Uh, I'm so glad that we did this. I was on the fence about doing this stream because I was really trying to limit the amount of streams I was doing this year. Really trying to reconnect with the things I loved this year. Um, and... Uh, I wanted to kind of lighten my load for these challenges. Of course, we're still doing the challenges. The next one's in August. All right, so get ready for that. Um, mark the calendars. August should be the working month. But um, yeah, I just wanted to go a little easier on myself. You noticed that I didn't live stream every single weekend and I didn't even make a piece of art this time around. I, you know, I did a little intro stuff. Um, I did some like intro title graphics. Next week, next weekend, Saturday, I'm going to be doing a breakdown for how I put that uh, motion blurred road together with the wet pavement and um, get into some cool tips and tricks on that. That'll be next weekend. But my point is, um, I'm glad that we did this stream because I, I almost didn't. Um, but I, re I asked myself, hey, I want to know. I, I want to know. I want to I want to interview these guys. I want to find out their creative process. I'm very much involved with like trying to figure out what my creative process is. What's the healthiest creative process? Um, and and the, I I feel inspired. I really do. It it's so good. It's so good seeing other people's workflows because it gets you out of your head and it gets you thinking a different way. And I personally really need that. Um, and I'm sure if I need it, some of you do too. So I hope you guys learned a lot doing this. Uh, and hanging out with me today um but uh i'll i'll chill out for the next 10 minutes with you guys and uh answer any questions that you guys have in the chat happy to hang out with you guys for that time let me pull up a chair <sighs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Camera's glitching out a little bit, but you know, it's all good. Oy. All right. Hit me with that at Punisher here in the chat and I'll see what we got. Uh, weekly challenge. Unfortunately, we're not doing the weekly challenge this time. Um, I've been so used to doing them uh, like after the weekend. And it's very rare that a weekly challenge times up with a live stream. Honestly, it went right over my head. So apologies. <laughs> um... But we're, I'll get you up. We'll get you on the Discord. Uh, like on Monday or something. Alright, let's see what we got here. Questions, questions. How do I texture stuff if I don't use UVs? Well, it comes with UVs. Um, usually, stuff comes with a mesh UV when you spawn something and you start modeling. But then you'll notice, oh no, as soon as I start adjusting this primitive, the UVs are off. So I always set my uvs to just uh box or cube or flat um that's it <laughs> i never like do any tweaking to it because um i honestly just don't know how which might sound ridiculous but uh and i didn't really care to to look it up 
you know, I've gotten good results from just switching it to box, you know, and, it, and then it looks fine. Will there be another challenge? Of course, there'll be another challenge. August is the working month. This August. Uh, Platinum, you're welcome. You're very welcome. I think it's an important stream for sure. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. So, it, had, it you know, we're doing it. How many people submitted for this challenge? We had 4,280 people submit for this challenge, um, which is ridiculous. That's a lot of people. Um, and uh, totaling up all of the, the collective work, we had 30 years of art, three decades worth of, of submissions of working hours. That is excluding render time and excluding any hours that went beyond because people would put like 40 million hours like i basically took i added up how many hours if you if you worked eight hours a day um uh for a working week full time on this for the five weeks that this challenge was open what that number was i basically took any any hours plugged in higher than that and i brought them all down to that number and then that was what got us because i think it was 40 years and then i plugged that in and it came down to 30 years i just wanted it to be a bit more accurate uh let's see hmm have I tried doing any composition and fusion inside of DaVinci? Not really, but I want to learn. That is something that I want to learn. How many years of render time? I hadn't tallied that up. Um, I hadn't tallied that up. I do not. I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys, let's see. Where can you go if you... Oh, visual, get out of here, dude. That set up, that prompt. Where can you go if you want to join art challenges every single week? Well, uh, I got a Discord server, and it's linked in the description. And uh, myself and the moderators, we hold these weekly challenges every single week uh, with new prompts every week. It's like art... Um, sorry, it's like uh, Inktober, right? Where you do a sketch every day for the month of October but it's just every week forever, basically. So you can hop in, hop out whenever you want. Um, we're always doing weekly challenges. We, I think last year we implemented like a badge system where kind of like Pokemon where, you know, as you, as you, as you win the weekly challenges, there's five winners every week and honorable mentions get points too. And you even get points for participation you get like a little a little emblem next to your name on discord and like you level up and go through the ranks uh and it's pretty pretty fun we had a good time designing those that was cool how do you feel about the success of this creative journey so far of this creative journey uh i mean the challenges i guess man the challenges have been really freaking awesome I had no idea that we would be doing these. We, we just finished our sixth challenge and it, it, it's everything, man. It, it like it, time and time again, it constantly inspires me seeing all of your awesome art. I love going through all the renders. That's the best time with the moderators. We go through all the renders together and we just have a blast. Um, and then pulling the top 100 is always tough. Pulling the top 20 is harder. Pulling the top five is even harder and putting them in an order is even harder. Um, but uh, it's it's really inspiring to me. Like I, I, I truly feel very inspired right now. Um, and that gets me excited. <laughs> that really does get me excited because uh, all last year, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, all of last year, I did not really feel inspired uh, to do anything, to do any art. All the art that I was putting out was like i was on autopilot and uh I, I i did a lot of cool stuff in unreal engine but i just ended up doing the same thing over and over and over so i'm very excited to have gone through another challenge to got to have gotten through it in a very healthy way 
uh, for me personally, I'm very proud of that. Um, and I feel more inspired than I had in, in the last couple of years, to be honest. And I am excited to really just, you know, listen to what I want to do, listen to the things that I think are fun and doing them, whether or not it can be monetized. That is the biggest thing. Having a YouTube channel is like, you know, it's my, it's my living. It's what pays the bills here. And, um, it's scary. There's a lot of pressure. We're talking, we're talking about pressure, right? It's a lot of pressure to, uh, to have on you when you, you know, you got to put out a video and it's got to get X amount of views and you got to attach a sponsor to it. And if it doesn't get this many views, then the sponsors will stop, start falling off. And then, but, oh, you know, oh, but it's successful. And, and, but now you're just doing the same thing day in and day out. And then you start to lose passion, lose your passion. And that is terrifying. Um, yeah. And like I said, I was kind of faced with that last year. So, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you all this book right here has been so much for me in the last month, but the artist's way, that's another book too. That's one that really, that, that, that's really helping out. Um, so I've kind of been reconnecting with the stuff that I love and I know I went, I'm, I'm kind of off on a tangent here from that question, but, uh, you ask, you know, how's the creative process going so far? So the journey, um, I'm excited you know, basically from now until August of, of uh, later this year, until the next challenge, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do that's fun and, you know, uh, figure it out from there. So right now I'm loving music. Oh man, I'm loving, loving making music right now. Uh, there's no pressure to it. I don't have to monetize. Oh, okay, but getting back to the monetization thing, it's like you feel like you have an idea, a good idea. It's like, oh, I got to monetize it. Ah, oh, but I can't really because I don't think the audience is going to like it. Ah, I'm not going to do it. Worst mindset ever. I realized that that's what is blocking me from, from creating the stuff that I want to do. So I just got to forget about making a living, which is terrifying, and just do it because it's fun and know that good things will come from it. Um, I can't second guess it, you know, so... That's tough. That's tough. But that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just like, you know, uh, it's kind of what, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's what I, it's what I need to do. So I'm excited for it. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I've been playing, been reconnecting with basketball, actually been playing a lot more basketball, which I used to play as a kid. Um, but I started playing recently and it's so much fun. <laughs> oh man. It is so much fun. Uh, terrifying, but very, very fun. See, oh, you're asking, where can I find your music? Where can I find your music? I'm so hesitant to like put it up somewhere. God forbid, monetize it. I just want it to be a personal creative thing. I, I don't want to start hearing, oh, your music's good. Oh, your music's bad. It's like, I just want to keep it as pure as possible. Technically, it's on SoundCloud. That's all I'll say. It's on SoundCloud. Um, but I'm just putting it there so I don't have to upload it to Discord to show friends. I can just send them a SoundCloud link, you know. Um, I'm just doing it for friends, you know. Just trying to show friends stuff. But yeah, if you can find it on SoundCloud, then you can find it. Uh, I'm not using FL Studio, no. I'm not using Ableton. Though it would be Ableton. I have it downloaded but I, honestly i'm just like i said i'm a, i like being hands-on with my stuff so i don't want to be like sitting here behind a computer clicking that is not inspiring for me i want to be on a drum set i want to be on the top of a mountain with a flute i want to be twisting knobs on a synthesizer um not in this chair this chair is like i i don't want to say cursed but it's like, it's not really inspiring. I don't, I'm not inspired sitting here behind the computer. You know, like I, I do that for 3D art and I'm, I'm trying to re-inspire myself 
on that angle, right? So what I've been doing music wise, actually, I'll show you guys. Oh. This. This thing's the best, man. I'll play you, I'll play you a little thing. Ah, so it boots up. Let me pull up the... Let's see, let's see. Let me pull up the Discord really quick so I can get the live feed going. Yep, okay, it's a little bright. Cool. Soto's gonna remove some noise filters. Who, uh, who knows how good this this will sound? It's gonna be. You know, you know what? I got a speaker right here. Hold on. All right. So this is called an OP1, and it's the best. <laughs> I love it so much. And uh, it's a it's like a Nintendo Switch, but for it's a portable DAW. Uh, so you can sample things with line in you. It has a microphone up here. You can attach a microphone. Like I have my H4N like this guy. So I'll go outside and I'll just like start recording the sound of a bird or something and then put it into here and give it reverb and delay. And then I just make a lot of ambient music really. Uh, it's very peaceful. Just go to the park and record the birds and record the air and add some like some chords to it, you know. It's really fun. All right, let me turn this on. Battery seventy percent. All right, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So yesterday, I just was behind the drum set, right? I was chilling, and let's see if this sounds good. I don't know how good this is gonna sound, audio-wise. Like on the music, the music's perfect, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but let's see. Let's see what I can do. I'm gonna mix it up here. So I got these four four tape tracks. Four tape tracks. If I hit play. Then you can like solo individual tapes. And this is just recorded, a little hand pan, or not hand pan, but a little, little drum I got. And I'm just recording this with my H4N with that other, that other mic I showed you guys. And then you just add layers, right? So the next layer. The next layer. too much fun it's too much fun I'll show you another thing uh, let's see oh uh, this song this is the one that I started putting together last night I was just uh, taking all of the PlayStation boot up sounds and then uh, like altering them and making a song with it so I hadn't I don't know what this sounds like Cause I was literally doing this without, without the, uh, here, we'll just hit play. with like the different layers so it has like a mixer here too 
Right, so you can start taking down one layer. You know, I love ambient music, guys, so much. Here is it here on PS3? A little bit, a little bit of PS1 with some PS3 in there. And then you work in that PSP, you get the PSP going. Yeah. Too much fun. Too much fun. So I'm like trying to get off the computer onto this out into the park and just making music or something, you know? So it's, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so I'll probably put some album stuff together at some point and release some stuff. But right now I'm just experimenting, having fun. Um, let's see, what else do I want to show you guys? Anything else? Oh, I got this one. This one's called Flute Techno. So I have this flute. Let me bust out the flute. Sorry, this just turned into like, let me talk about all the stuff I'm excited about, which is a good thing. It's a good thing. So this is called a ney. This is a, an Arabic ney. It was a, it's a swamp reed basically. And it's uh, like, two, it takes two years to dry. And then it's cut by this master. I forget his name. But his signature is right there. Arab Instruments, I believe, is where I got this from. And uh, it's got this back hole that you cover with your thumb. And it just has this awesome desert flute sound. Let's see if I can... This took me a month to even produce a squeak from. It's really tough to play. So I preface that before I play it. <clears throat> and it's there's four octaves on this thing, four octaves, which is crazy. See, I can barely produce a sound, it's nuts. notes are tough to hit it's been a minute since I played this one I can tell you gotta get your mouth in the perfect place anyway let's see what flute techno sounds like Let's build it up, let's build it up. Some like it's like you know a little bit of that still a work in progress still a work in progress 
But I've been having fun with that. Anyway, back to the questions, y'all. Um, but yeah, I got a drum set in the garage. That's fun. I love playing drums. I've been playing drums since I was in middle school. Um, Shader, thank you for the super chat. The Herman Miller chair. Yeah, this is a, this is a classic, man. This one's great. I, I remember Freddie said, uh, who also has a Herman Miller chair, but Freddie was like, dude, you spend all day in your bed, so uh, get a good bed. And I was like, you know what? That's great advice. And um, I think the same thing can be applied for the office chair. Uh, luckily, I got this one third hand, so it was way cheaper. It was like way cheaper. Um, but agreed, man. Yeah, it's like one of the best investments. Um, Paras, okay, you said the 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 winner, um, Fabricio. He said that he was modeling and animating the insect at the same time. How is that possible? I think what he's saying is he's going back and forth between modeling and animation, back and forth between modeling and animation. He's not like modeling finishes the model one hundred percent, then starts animation, finishes the animation one hundred percent, then goes on to texturing finishes texturing 100%. I think he's bouncing back and forth between all these different things. And he's doing it because like, he'll maybe be inspired to model and he follows the inspiration for as long as he can go for, you know, whether it's days or hours. And then he'll switch over to another thing if he's inspired for that. If he gets stuck or lost, you know, he'll, he'll move on to the next thing. He's not just trying to finish it to go to the next spot. It's all happening one after the other. I think that's what he meant by, uh, you know, at the same time. Uh, maybe the next challenge should be to make art with your music. That would be crazy. I've thought about it. Um, I'm not there yet, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to start slipping my music into my videos. But for now, I'll, I'll uh, hit up the professionals when it comes to doing that. Fex, you say you play drums since you were four. You also enjoy drums and being creative. It is the best. Playing drums really is the best because I would love to be at a point where, uh, I don't know, like living in like a village setting where all you really have to worry about is, of course, the essentials, food, um, shelter, uh, connection with other people around you, the community, small little, small little area. And, you know, you'd be bored at night. You'd want some, uh, some interaction, some, something fun to do. So you would play drums, like drum circles. And I think the, what was it, the first three instruments was the drum, the voice, of course, the shaker and the flute. I think those were the ones and that was it back in the day. So like, it's a very, ingrained thing in all of us is is music drums like that kind of stuff like goes way back um so I, I i love it i could just play drums all day long it's the best uh there's actually a great 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 video i'm gonna link you guys uh let's see if i can pull it up here for y'all it's in my youtube favorites and it's about this like Someplace in Africa, maybe. And it's about how they play music every day, day in and day out when they're working uh, in the fields, when they're working and like the iron, the iron work, when they're doing like uh, smithing and all that stuff. Everything is done to the beat and they produce the beat themselves with, you know, just their feet, their voices, whatever. And there's this great interview. It's like a 10 minute video. Um, let me see if I can find it really quick. Playlists. Uh, my favorites. Let's see, here it is, here it is. I got you guys with the link. Right here, boom. If you're into music, if you're into drums, check that out. That's a cool one. 
But uh, let's see what other questions do we have. Do I have any plans for upcoming YouTube videos? Yeah. Um, let's see. What can I what can I mention? Um, I love I love photo scanning. Um, so I I want to do a couple things with that. Um, some some photo scanning videos this year. Uh, the people over at uh, uh, Capturing Reality is the company. Reality Capture is the program. Uh, are super nice, super cool. So, um, planning on doing some cool stuff with them this year. Uh, you know, there's just some videos that I have in my head. We'll see if, you know, what 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 they what they come about. Let's see if they come about. But uh, I think that's 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 the most I can say. Of course, the challenge in August. We'll be doing another challenge in August. Chicken NPC. Yes, that is the Lego tree in the background. I should have had the Sakura leaves on this thing. Um, cause it is soccer season. Uh, let us see. Yeah, Cole, photo scanning is cool, man. I got a couple of videos on it if you want to check those out, but, uh, it's fun. You do it for free these days. Yeah, yeah, scanning rocks is always a blast. Oh, man, so NAB, uh, is coming up. If you guys are, anyone here going to NAB, give me a thumbs up in the chat. If you're going to be at NAB, give me a thumbs up. I'll be there on Monday. Uh, I'll be on the show floor on Monday around the Maxon booth. And uh, I'm not presenting or anything. I'm just going to be hanging out for support. Uh, I'll be there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evenings for all of the dinners and uh, little after party stuffs. Um, but I'm going to be rock climbing in Red Rock on Tuesday and Wednesday all day. Since we'll be out in Vegas and I cannot wait. We're gonna do we're gonna try and do nine pitches, which is basically you climb up to an anchor point, your partner climbs to you, you climb to another anchor point, your partner climbs to you, and we do that nine times. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm very excited for it. Um Yes, this is from Death Stranding. Let's see, let's give a little little death straining love here. I got my boy chilling. This guy is very, very delicate. Ooh, I'm terrified just holding this up. Yeah. This could fall apart in minutes. You look at it, just teetering. Ah, oh, so sketch. Eh. Yeah, my, my buddy Devon got this for me, I think for a birthday or Christmas or something. Love it. Oh. Good times. <sighs> Y'all. All right. This is the last question. I'm going to answer this one, this last question. And then I'm going to bounce. I'm going to get some food here. But uh, Isaac, you say, what, in, what motivated me to start 3D? The first time I ever messed around with 3D, I mean, I, I remember... Like, I always loved going to art class. I always loved drawing. And um, that eventually led me to, like, uh, I, I also loved Airsoft and, like, playing ARMY. I was the kid in the neighborhood when I was, like, seven or eight, decked out in full, like, military gear. I had, like, a wooden bazooka. I had, like, helmets and camo nets and belts and gear. And I was just this, like, little kid that was me in the neighborhood. That was just me. And I would like hide in the bushes and spy on cars with like my binoculars as they would go by just patrolling, you know, just patrolling the neighborhood. Um, and I like wanted to join the Marines for the longest time. Um, I had a lot of friends whose parents were, were in the military and, uh, that was like my thing. I wanted to do that all the way up until high school. And so I kind of mixed that with like drawing and kind of put them together and started adding muzzle flashes to like gun airsoft videos, you know, little like war scenes. I always loved like Saving Private Ryan, uh, Behind Enemy Lines, like all those movies. And uh, I would try and recreate these like war scenes. And I was like, oh, I got to add the gunshots and the muzzle flashes. So I started like painting and muzzle flashes in like just the frame. I'd save the frame out from 
Windows Movie Maker, I'd bring it into like Macromedia Fireworks is what the program was called. Um, it wasn't even wasn't even Photoshop. And then I would import the frame back in to Windows Movie Maker, and there would be a muzzle flash there, like in the video. And uh, I was like, oh, so crazy. And like it adds sound effects and stuff. So I started getting like, you know, deep into that and stuff. And then eventually, uh, you know, 3D was always like a big roadblock for me. It was like, oh man, I need to learn how to do that stuff. It's crazy. And it was just like, I remember being in high school, like must have been 10th grade. There was a program called Wings 3D. It was like this free, like browser based 3D program. And during lunch break, we would go and like just sit in the library on the computers and mess around in this program, Wings 3D, with like a couple other guys from school. And we would just build stuff uh, all next to each other. We'd be modeling next to each other. And I like, n you rarely get that, at least me now. Like, I'm just, it's just me in my office. But having a group setting, a group environment is so helpful. Um, it's one of the great things about, you know, about Corridor is, you know, you have people at all these computers, you'd be doing stuff together, working on a project together is fun. Um, or any job where you go into the office and work on creative stuff is fun. So we would do that. And um, at, a, at, a, at a certain point, you know, I discovered uh, Video Copilot and was going through all those tutorials. And, uh, you know, he started doing like 3D integration tutorials there was like a meteor strike thing he did with a hole in the ground. I was like, man, this is next level. I got to get on this. So then I got uh, C4D release 10, R10. And I just started modeling stuff like modeling, mm, uh, like hard surface kind of stuff was really what I loved. And I watched these tutorials by these two guys, uh, Chris Tate and Ben Tate. And they made these tutorials on cgtuts.com or it was like 3dtuts.com or something. And they had the best tutorials. It was for 3ds Max on how to model in 3ds Max, and I, I just ate those up. I love that so much. And I was like, how do I integrate it into the into the videos? And that was always a big question for me. And like Freddie, he was the one who hopped on with me and showed me how Buju worked, which was this like crazy advanced tracking program. And Sam and Nico too. You know, they were in 3ds Max all at the time with Brandon and. Freddy and uh, they would hop on like uh, some voice call Skype and we would uh, they would show me how it works and I still didn't quite understand and then eventually I just moved out back out to California and kind of started figuring things out and yeah just connecting with the people that that I loved that were doing the things that I loved and yeah just kept kept following this kept following the passion so um That was a long answer to your question, but that was fun. Appreciate it. Uh, guys, I should bounce. Thank you for hanging out with me. It was a good time. It was good to stream with you guys again. I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this. So thank you, guys. Uh, that was a good time. I am going to bounce. I'm going to get some food. Maybe I'll get some drums in. Maybe I'll get some flute in. Ooh, man, I got to finish that PS2 jam. So many fun things to do. All right, guys. Uh, next weekend, okay? Next weekend, I have an art breakdown for the like intro animation I did for the Top 100 montage. So I'm gonna get into, uh, you know, essentially how to make a how to make a really cool intro graphic for like a title thing. It's like an abstract render. Uh, lots of it's a very simple scene, but I'm kind of breaking it down in in detail for you guys. Uh, and I'll be going over a lot of fun stuff like uh, HDRIs, I'll be going over IES lights, I'll be going over uh, camera shake, how to get realistic camera shake, I'll be going over uh, um, uh, realistic lighting, building a scene from the ground up, I'll be talking about uh, camera settings, aces, motion blur, um, what else, what else, oh yeah, uh, like reflective streets, how to get a realistic reflective street going. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm excited. How to, how to get something looking really nice in a very small amount of time. So that's what I'll be talking about next weekend, guys. So 
If you're not subscribed, if you're not scribbed, then consider scribbing. I think you have to say that, right? As a YouTuber, you got you have to, and you have to like say, oh, you gotta hit the bell too. All right, guys, I'm a bounce. Ronan, I like it. Have a creative weekend. Have a creative week. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. See you on the server. We'll be doing the weekly challenge. Uh, I'll announce the winners on Monday, most likely. I'm gonna take my weekend here. And uh, yeah, have a good one, guys. Have a good one. I'll catch you later. Peace. Thank you.